if you are not familiar with WTSMTV.com, just want to let you know, on the website, scroll down and find the show Drive On. We are military-owned, not you know, currently by the Pentagon or anything, but our CEO served our great country, and so therefore all of you that gave us our freedom through your sacrifice, we just want to let you know that we serve you in every way that we can, and you'll find some military programming, namely Drive On at WTSMTV.com. And speaking of which, let me just tell you how happy we are to be here as your home of Rattlers football. Thanks for welcoming us into your homes if you're watching us live right now. If you're watching us live through any other means that's not WTSMTV.com, keep in mind you're not getting the full story. We give you an hour-long pregame show, heavy involved with fans in the postgame show, exclusive access to Kevin Guy throughout the week. So if you want hardcore Rattlers information, subscribe to WTSMTV.com. And, Dale, what's really interesting is the number one story in the IFL includes the Rattlers, but it might not be the number one story for the Rattlers anymore. They've already moved on long ago from trading an MVP quarterback. But it is still a major issue in this league that a perennial MVP, you almost know when Drew Powell's your quarterback you're going to the postseason, and Kevin Guy made a very controversial or gutsy or both decision to move on from him to start this season. I would say both. And okay. obviously, I think you look at any level of football, you have an MVP, not a candidate, an MVP. Yep. Who now for a couple years struggled in the playoffs. How hard is it to let an MVP? Again, when I look at it, I'm like, okay, that'd be like Patrick Mahomes struggling in the AFC Championship game. Yes, yes. Uh, are, are you going to train him? Yes. I mean, the only I, team that does it is the Packers, yeah, it seems like. <laughs> yes. And yet you, you, you look at what Kevin Guy did, and he – one of the advantages of being the head coach, the general manager, the president, is guess what? He's willing to deal with the heat. Yes. And he yes. took some heat, but he just said, I don't know if this guy can win us a championship. Yep. And I'm going to go in a different direction. And he did it. He's delivered with all the nonsense and the flack. And, and now all that lays ahead is, was he right? We'll see, because this is not the way he wanted it. Three quarterbacks in his last three games are different to start each game. Last game of the playoffs, you go to Powell. This first game against Naz, he was able to go with Dalton Sneed. I know Jamal Miles did not have the game he wanted, but if Miles plays his normal way, the numbers would have been great for Dalton Sneed. Here's the inside story, though. Dalton Sneed got hurt early in the first half and sucked it up and played on it anyway. Right. It was at halftime, Coach Guy found out there's an injury, and he said, we're not pushing this this early in the season, so there's a little bit of an advantage. If you've got to go with Kettle, guess what? He's already had a half of playing time. Right. Well, he's had a half a game of playing time and a full week of practice. Yes. Knowing he's starting. And it, I don't care what people say, you're supposed to practice like you're going to play, you're supposed to practice like you're going to start. You don't. Yep. I, I played for 17 years. You don't. <laughs> you know, it's just like when you go into halftime, the coach goes, hey, you know, I know we're up by 28, but it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Yes. Hey, no knucklehead. We're up by 28 <laughs> points. So, so there's a certain mentality that Kettle – was able to have this week as teammates were able to get the timing down, and I think that will bode well for them. And just so everyone watching the broadcast understands, we can all become friends and get along. The man next to me won three Super Bowls as a Cowboy, and I am an enormous Washington Commanders fan. And, and we're all in this together now. We can all come together to celebrate our Rattlers. Well, see, if, if you've been a long time, I'm just going to say Washington fan. Yes, yes. So so you acquiesced and you've given in and you, you don't call them? No, I only did it just because of the broadcast. <laughs> I'm okay with Washington football team. Right, I actually, okay. I'll, I'll let that roll off the tongue. Okay. Well, we were talking about it in the pregame. What would the Rattlers do? I admit I could not hear the official, so I don't know. If, if they Vegas do. deferred or if the Rattlers won and chose to receive. So we'll find out later on when we get to start the second half what happened. Miles is deep, and right now that's Gibbons standing on the goal line ready to go for the first kickoff of a regular season game in Glendale for the Arizona Rattlers. Welcome home to the west side. Kick's going to be taken about a yard deep by Gibbons to the 5, and he finds a seam at the 10, flag for a hold, and he's got maybe a touchdown. For right now, it's 6-0 Rattlers, but don't jump up and down in your seats. Because <laughs> this will probably end up 
coming back. It, it gives me a chance real quick to say one rule change. We'll let him announce it. If you're trying to watch out for injuries mm -hmm. in special teams, the flag goes down for holding. Play should be blown dead. Why continue to play? Why can why continue to be if you're the official back there you throw the flag blow the whistle it's over with. Technically, <laughs> and you, can, you tell me if you care. Technically, if the defense forces a fumble, they would want to decline the penalty. Okay, well, see, now, you know, I don't that like mean you I, I don't that. I don't like our partnership already. <laughs> <laughs> you throw a kink into my plan. And, well, and, you're still being – see, here's the thing. You're the football guy, so you're trying to protect the athlete. I'm like, hey, they're gladiators. Throw them out there and see what happens. So Kettle now the first starting quarterback in Glendale for a regular season home game. Low snap, hands off. Brooks will cut it up through the line. Doesn't get much, and it'll be second down. You look at that offensive line. Lamar Mady been around I, since I didn't have artificial hips and had all my joints. Been here a long time. Just one of the best offensive linemen in the indoor football league. And, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about this offensive line and how Kevin Kai puts together offensive lines and his philosophies as the game goes on. Right now, it's trips right. We'll see if they stay in it. Yep, they do. Kettle looks right. Throws deep on a nine route. Got a man and it hit the corner in the head. And it's third down. Isaiah Houston was the man that was open. He had a step, but Kettle couldn't get enough air under it. No, he couldn't get enough air under that. And uh, uh, Bryce Hampton. Unbeknownst to him, broke up a pass <laughs> with his helmet as it bounced off the back of his head. Looked like he had a chance, and that's one of those passes that I think Kettle will learn. Kind of put a little air under it. Yes. you got you got to lead your receiver. The worst thing that can happen is you overthrow your receiver, and you live to see another down. Interesting to see what they're going to do on third and deep now. Ball spotted at about the nine-yard line. They need to get to the 15 for the first down. Two men in motion, Kettle looking, rolls a little bit to his left, pressure, steps away from the pressure. He's got all day. He's looking, pump fakes, tries to cut it back up the field, breaks a tackle and dives for the stick. We'll wait to see the official signal. He's going to be incredibly close to a first down. Really close and obviously makes this an obvious try and kick it situation too. I think you're going to go for it if you're a Kevin guy here early in the football game, but Officially fourth and one. Yeah, absolutely great coverage downfield. I watch it usually when a quarterback holds the ball that long, somebody yes. comes open. And there was a white jersey on every black jersey that is el eligible to catch the ball. That was the first test from what I saw. I went to the game at Naz last week, and Kettle does seem on occasion to think I can get it with my legs. And he needs to be able to stay there, relax, and throw it. One second to snap it. They barely get it off. There's no reason for a buzzer to sound. Good catch on the far sideline. First down for Houston. So a clutch fourth and two conversion. But that's going to be a distraction. The play clock expired. It got to zero, rubbing it in on all the officials that they didn't call it. But you know full well the mechanics of the delay of game. It's back judge sees it then checks the snap. He gives you one beat after zero, and you can tell the coaching staff of Vegas is not happy. Well, it's not, and really it's that buzzer that went off. Yes. And again, just like us, we fought through some things in the pregame. <laughs> uh, Glendale Arena is going to fight through some things here. It was an interesting thing. Those are high school shot clocks <laughs> that they're using. Little pitch play to Brooks. He cuts it back to the inside. Oh, and if he could have broke that tackle, he had a lane. Still picks up about four yards. But that's an interesting thing. We'll see if they've been able to turn that buzzer off. If you look on either sideline, Chapman in on that tackle, there is a play clock that's actually a shot clock for high school and college basketball games here. Uh -huh. For those of you that are thrilled with the performance of Grand Canyon in this NCAA tournament, they played South Carolina in this building. Well, a shot clock has a buzzer that goes off at zero. Not what you want on a play clock. Kettle. Sends two men in motion, looks to the right, throws to the right, has Houston, and he makes the catch in the back of the end zone. That's six. Touchdown, Rattlers. Right over the outstretched hands of Chapman after one throw to Houston not being on the money and a little short. This one was perfect. Well, and I'm sitting there watching this play unfold. I'm like, I don't know if he's supposed to go for the go route because there are a couple <laughs> guys – they were open, and that's one of those, no, 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 yes, 
uh, threw it a little bit behind him where only uh, Houston could catch the ball and obviously come down with a catch and a touchdown. So it's somewhat of a controversial touchdown. The extra point attempt is up, and it is good. So the Rattlers have a 7-0 lead, and you know Mike Davis is upset with him on whether or not that was something that should last because of the delay of game situation. There is a timeout on the field. Let's watch this replay before we go to break. Look at that into the rounded end zone where he runs out of space, Dale. A back shoulder throw that in the indoor football league is a little different than the outdoor game. Really nice execution by the Rattlers. This is the home of Arizona Rattlers football. This is WTSMTV.com. Hello, all. Isaiah Jackson Jr. here from iOS. Tune in every Monday through Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. as we get into all your local and national teams in the NFL, MLB, and NBA. We also have some fun segments as well. We get into GM mode, factor foolishness, swipe right, and we also look at all the rumors taking place in the sports world today. All that and more every Monday through Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. here at WTSM TV. Honor is a steady rhythm, a beat that inspires remarkable medical professionals to work with passion and purpose. A tireless dedication to the lives we serve is what drives all of us at Honor Health. A shared focus on doing what we love. Honor Health. Honor above all. I'm Dr. Pamela Lund, Director of Sports and Orthopedic Imaging at Simon Med Imaging. I've been reading sports MRI studies for patients and athletes at all levels for over 20 years. When you're injured, an accurate diagnosis can mean the difference between chronic pain or pain-free enjoyment of your life and sports activities. At Simon Med, we treat you just like all of our elite athletes, with state-of-the-art equipment, precise interpretation, and compassion. So this is a big issue last week, the kickoff. <laughs> you got a seven to nothing lead, but Dale, two NAS kickoff return for touchdowns last week. That's too, too many. <laughs> yeah. Great kick. Chapman takes it eight yards deep with his back to the wall and gets smashed at the five yard line as coming up was Connor Taylor with a big blast. Yep, yep. Well, Here's what I don't get, Dale. We're, we live in a society of politically correctness. Why are people allowed to grow long hair and just mock people like me? I don't think that's fair. We should be thinking of everybody. Think of the bold men and everybody sh cuts their hair. So the head coach of the Nighthawks, Mike Davis, would not tell us who the starting quarterback is, and it is a shock. It's Johnson. Handoff goes to the right-hand side. And the reason why it's a shock, I have some inside information. Kevin Guy made the decision, we're going to prepare for Mancuso all week and then see what happens. Well, now we see what happens as Jerome Johnson is actually the starting quarterback. Play the Arizona Rattlers. They want to somehow, some way, control the ball a little bit. Keep the Rattlers' explosive <laughs> offense back in the bullpen. We'll see if they're mm -hmm. able to do that. So we'll see what Johnson can do now. Three receivers on the left. Regular motion like an old outdoor game. Johnson with two stutter steps, and he's going to dive forward close to the first down, but doesn't quite get there. You don't normally see outdoor standard right-to-left motion, and you did there. It, it looked like it was almost like a T motion. Guy yes. coming across the formation, and the guy going straight forward and keep the ball, and now you bring up a third down and, and very makeable situation for Vegas. I think I have this rule right. It's a little bit of a nuance. The motion man can come in and block defensive backs, but he can't turn and block down this year on linemen. So keep an eye on how that's going to be used because clearly these receivers are here to block. False start on the play as the motion man on the near side of the field, Randolph, was about three yards past the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. 
and they said an offensive lineman moved as well. So we, oh, we have two guys. They called it officially on Mallory, but in my opinion, I'm going with Randolph about eight feet beyond the LOS. And if this is your first arena football or indoor football league game, understand, they'll give you a grace period. Yes. They'll give you a yard, maybe yard and a half. You get the three yards, <laughs> yes, exactly. and they're fourth to throw uh, the flag. Third and long. Johnson, play fake. Drops back into his own end zone. He wants to throw mm. deep. He's got a man on the post pattern. Caught and then dropped. Last minute hand from Dylan Winfrey to knock it free. That was Big Lee. Well, that was. That looks like a touchdown what. right there, doesn't it? Look at that close from Winfrey. Tell you what, I think if uh, Quentin Randolph has nine, t ten times to catch that ball, he's catching him nine yep. times wide open on a, on a post route. Ball I've, hung up just a little yep. bit, allowed Winfrey to come back and knock the ball loose. I'm comfortable in saying he caught that, mm -hmm. and Winfrey knocked it away before the second foot made it a completed pass. That was fantastic close from Dylan Winfrey. So it basically goes from a 7-6 to six score back to 7 to nothing with a 48-yard or 58-yard field goal attempt, and now there's a delay of game. And guess what? The holder <laughs> picked it up and started running. That was kind of interesting. And they haven't fixed the buzzer yet. No. So officially that buzzer's going off, and that's going to drive the players crazy. Now here's a little nuanced rule. This is supposed to be half the distance to the goal. Mark it at the four. However, when you are kicking, you are allowed to ask to have the ball move to the five. Big question is whether or not Coach Mike Davis knows that. Now, the side judge just went to the umpire to talk to him. I think the umpire is saying, hey, they haven't asked me to move it. Okay, we'll just leave it at the four. Advantage Rattlers here. Messiah's back to kick right from the T in Rattlers. Call it about a 61 yarder. Pretty good boot. Going to be taken by Jamal Miles, three yards deep on the midfield. Goal return, 5-10. Goes left, has a lane at the 20, tries to get past midfield, can't quite do it, but great field position for the Rattlers, and they have a 7-0 lead. Is there anything more beautiful than seeing five 300-pound dudes running down the yes. field trying to cover <laughs> a <laughs> kick? Thank goodness Holly was there, number one for Vegas, to make the tackle. Otherwise... That might have been returned for a touchdown. It was a fantastic man. So far, we've seen two kick returns from Jamal Miles, and I think the Rattlers are going to be thrilled with both of them. Granted, one of them a hold certainly helped. <laughs> but the result was still a touchdown for about eight seconds. So let's see what Kettle can do on his second drive of the game. He's already led them down for a touchdown. Deep to Isaiah Houston. When he caught it, he was on the right. This time, Houston's on the left. Play fake. Kettle will keep it. Nice block, but he doesn't read the block. He goes outside. Picks up decent yardage, but that's another level, Dale. Mady had his man completely sealed off, and Kettle didn't run through and ran right into Calhoun. Well, you got Kettle at 6'4", 210 pounds. Obviously, very, very athletic guy. Feeling very comfortable with him running the football. That is a dual threat that can really put pressure mm -hmm on these indoor football league defenses. Mady did a fantastic job switching the hips, driving the guy to the outside. There's just one issue. Look at Kettle the, ran to the outside. Uh, listen to you switching his hips. Oh, I'm, I'm Mr. How Combine. How about the leverage? I and, love the Combine, <laughs> man. That's where I learned all this stuff. Now I just fake it. Kettle to throw. Kind of throws off his back foot and hits the crowd with it. No man in sight. It's uh, Caesar was the one in coverage on the play. And it'll be third down for Arizona. And Kettle can be chased off his spot, Dale. Yeah, I and mean, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Again, nobody open for Kettle to throw the football mm -hmm. to. It'll be interesting to see how Coach Guy adjusts some of the routes that they're running because there's ample time, but there's nobody open. And now a flag comes out. Yeah. It's one of those calls that sometimes confuses fans because it's like an NBA game when 10 minutes after the play we call a foul. But the reason why is there's always official conversation. Was he in the pocket? Yes. Therefore, it's got to have a receiver in the vicinity. Side judge, did you have a receiver in the vicinity? No, I didn't. But it wasn't the, the side judge's job to know if he's in the pocket. So then they have a conversation, then they throw the flag. 
Then the referee announced it's second down, which was the previous down. There's a catch. It's loss of down on intentional grounding, so officially it's third and long. We have it straight now. We'll try trips right on third and long. Drop the snap, pick it up, but he already wants to run and runs himself into a sack, and that was for Autry, who's the, normally the nose guard, and that's something that Kettle's got to be able to relax a little bit. Not a good snap. You know, Carter's got to get better, but he kind of panicked and immediately wanted to run forward. Yeah, when you, when you drop the ball, most quarterbacks, your time clock gets sped up a lot. You're mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I'm not even going to look. He didn't even look yes. downfield rather than, you know what, I'm going to trust my offensive line for one, two seconds, then I might have to run with yeah. this thing. But it's just a natural human thing. Oh, I dropped the ball. Things are going haywire. So try the field goal attempt from the 10. It's kicked well, and it's just a little wide left. Outstanding play on the part of Evans to try to be able to get it and be able to make that kick. So it's going to stay 7 nothing coming up. We'll see what the Nighthawks are able to do on their second possession. That's next. This is the home of the Arizona Rattlers. This is WTSMTV.com. Perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oil, the gold standard of light beer. Hi, it's Parker Weintho again with eXp Realty. Not only do I help first-time home buyers, but I also work with those looking for second homes, vacation homes, and even investment properties. Give me a call or visit our website today. This is the only station in Phoenix that gives you six hours of local sports programming every weekday morning. I'm the host of Doug Franz Unplugged from 6 to 8. Dale joins our pregame host, Steve McCollum, Steve's, Steve McCollum, for 8 to 10 on the main event. And our sideline reporter, Isaiah Jackson, is here with you from 1 to 3. Let's go back to live action. Johnson will keep it big hole, and he goes right up the middle, and he's faster than most of the Rattlers. They need to do a horse collar tackle to bring him down. No flag, first and goal inside the 5. Winfrey was able to catch up. Dobbs was there as well. And, boy, that was a problem last week at Naz, too. Well, they kept on thinking they weren't going to run the ball anymore. I, I, the, the most beautiful part of this play is watching number 78, Corey Woodruff, all six foot five, 340 pounds of his. There's nobody to block, and he had to run 40 <laughs> yards. Should have just handed him the ball. <laughs> Let the big man rumble. Johnson, play fake? No, he does hand it off. And this time they're stout and able to stop that run second and goal. Well, and there is something because, you know, when we were talking to Kevin Guy this week, you know, you, you look at Naz last week, they kept continued to try to run the football, and, 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 and the Rattlers were thinking, okay, that's the last run. Yep. Nope, run again. So teams are seeing something where they think they can run the ball on this Rattlers defense, and we'll see if they can stop it. One back beside him, that's Wimbush. Johnson, plenty of time to snap it. Three receivers to his right. Hands off to Wimbush. Tries to find a seam. Can't do it. Outstanding play by Lowry. Ball is loose. It gets into the end zone. No signal. Now the referee comes in and says the fumble was after the knee went down. So as of now, it's going to be third down. Let's see if Kevin Guy disagrees. Looks like Caleb Hawley was the player for Vegas to jump on this. And again, another run. Ball comes loose. You see it right there. 
Boy, oh boy. Interesting. If hey, I am I, Vegas, yeah. aren't you challenging this? Yeah, if, I, if I'm a Vegas fan, I'm saying you got to take a look at that because I'm not so sure his knee was down. It was not fourth down, so you can advance the fumble. They're going to not challenge. I thought he picked it up and jumped forward in one motion. So with four seconds to snap it, they're going to try to run a play on third and goal. Play clock went off. We'll ignore the buzzer. And getting swallowed up whole is Johnson. And now a big decision for Coach Davis on fourth down. Massive skirmish going on at the 15-yard line and a late flag. Yeah. Now this is going to be interesting to see what happens as it looked like for the Rattlers, Omari, uh, Omari Alexander was in a big battle with C.J. Walston. Let's see what happens. I, I like that call, Dale, because in the old days, what does that do? But now it actually targets both of them with an unsportsmanlike, and now they've got to be on their best behavior. One more, they're ejected. And, and, and you call it the first time, and, I, Doug, every time I see one of those after the play, I've never been intimidated by a guy doing something to me after the play. <laughs> you knocked the snot out of me during the play. Now you got my attention, but... <laughs> That's so nonsensical for either side because if yep. it's on the Rattler, they just call the Rattler, they get another set of downs. And if it's Vegas, they're going to move you back. Just keep it between the that snap and the whistle. So it's still 7 nothing Rattlers. This could make it 7-3. to three. Kick is up. Good hold. Good snap. Right through the guy wires above the netting. And it is officially 7-3. to three. George Kettle, George Kettle, I thought like George Kittle. <laughs> Coming up, Garrett Kettle. We'll see if he can be able to lead this team down the way and be able to put a second touchdown on the board. We'll watch next on WTSMTV.com. You came looking for a light beer, and you found gold. Modelo Oro, the light beer with a smooth, elevated taste, perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oro, the gold standard of light beer. Hello, I'm Parker Weinthal with the Rosen Team, broker by eXp Realty. Are you a first-time home buyer? Guiding my clients through the home buying process is a passion of mine. And believe it or not, it's easier than you think. Give me a call or visit our website today. Spooner has been revolutionizing our community's experiences with physical therapy and hand therapy in the Valley since 1990. Make Spooner your first stop for your injury prevention, recovery, and treatment needs. Through specialized rehabilitation, personalized treatment plans, and functional performance trainings, our team is your team. Visit SpoonerPT.com to find one of our Valley-wide locations near you. Rattlers fans, thanks a ton for watching us right here on the home of the Rattlers, WTSMTV.com. Now, do you want more Rattlers coverage? You get it tomorrow morning. WTSMTV.com has four hours of local sports programming tomorrow morning with the main event from 8 to 10 and me, Doug Franz Unplugged, presented by Whirlwind Golf Club at Wild Horse Pass. Exclusive Rattlers info tomorrow morning at 6 on WTSMTV.com. Kind of exciting to be here. For those of you that are watching live, great to have you. But we also would love to invite you to do something even better. Come to the game, cheer like crazy, then come back home and watch Dale explain everything you just saw. You can watch it on demand always. Rattlers are always on WTSMTV.com. You can see at the bottom of the scoreboard there, 7-3 to three Rattlers. Ball takes a funny hop, and it's caught there by Gibbons. Deep in his own end zone, he's able to break away, avoid the rouge, and get up the sideline to the 25. A rouge is when you get tackled in the end zone, and the kicking team gets a point for doing that. And there was a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, Dale, for a point, and Vegas didn't uh, wasn't able to execute. Nice job by the, uh, well, yeah, obviously a great athletic move to get out, and then all of a sudden you turn it from almost a rouge to yes. almost a touchdown. You're right. In the, in the span of a couple of seconds there, I do want to point out something. All right, that's the fourth uh, Doug Franz unplugged uh, spot I've seen. <laughs> and I've not seen one for Stephen Dale. So I just, uh, just so you know, I'm keeping track. I didn't know that. I, I Just so you know, I'm keeping track. 
I was just noticing the Dayton Flyers <laughs> shirt, and the Flyers got smoked by U of A. Kettle to throw, pump fake, flush from the pocket, tries to run around, gets positive yardage, and then just gets absolutely smashed into the boards by Autry Lee. Well, and Autry Lee, 6'2", 305 pounds. He looks a smidge bigger than 305 pounds, and I think if you're 99, you got to play nose tackle. Look at the athleticism, though, the spin move. Get over there and chase you down, knock you out of bounds. And it, from up here, it looked a little more physical than it actually yep. did on the field. Nice job pulling up, and uh, officials not calling a, a penalty. I like, too. I realize it was only a one-yard gain, but that, there was nobody open. So Again, I've not seen Kettle. receivers come open at all. Even yeah. the touchdown pass yep. was well covered. Trips right. See what he's going to do here. One player was out of his stance, so this is going to be – an illegal defense, so right now it stinks, but coming up, the Rattlers will pick up five yards. Jackson officially gets the tackle for now. Well, just so those uh, you know, Indoor Football League people have not watched a whole lot of games, I know it's frustrating like when I watch soccer or lacrosse. I don't understand the rules, so sometimes it's frustrating to watch. The reason the penalty was called is all three defensive linemen have to have their hand on the ground when the ball snaps. And so if your hand comes off the ground, ball snap, there's a five-yard penalty. Miles goes into motion on the far side of the field. Kettle's going to keep it, reads the block well, cuts inside, dives forward, will get marked ahead for the first down. It's first and ten. Ford gets credit for the tackle. Kind of almost looked like that was a premeditated run. Yeah, I think so too. Um, Although no pulling offensive lineman, but a nice job. Reaching out and picking up the first down. Red Brooks' block very, very well. That's the end of one. Rattlers have a 7-3 lead. He's a three-time Super Bowl champion, Del Hellestre. My name's Doug Franz. This is WTSMTV.com. Hey, Rattlers fans, it's Steve McCollum from the main event, and you might recognize this guy, Dale Hellestray. Dale, what do we do from 8 to 10 here Monday through Friday on WTSM-TV? We're going to kick everything off with the Arizona Rattlers home opener with the new arena and get you started there. Obviously, a lot of college basketball, too. Of course, Diamondbacks coming your way, Coyotes, Suns, and more. So join us Monday through Friday here on WTSM-TV. Burrito Express started with my father about 25 years ago. He got laid off and decided that he needed to do something to provide for his family. My brother and I were older teens, so literally we decided we're going to start out of his house. So we delivered uh, menus in a square mile area, literally started delivering burritos out of our home in Mesa, Arizona. And after about a month, he said, let's do this. Went and found his first location, and believe it or not, that's how it started. We started with one location back in 1995. Now we're where we are now. Coming up on Tuesday at noon on Hanging with Coop and Jeff, Coop's back, and we'll get you ready for the start of the baseball season as the Diamondbacks look to defend their NL title. Also, we're in the Sweet 16 of March Madness. All that coming up on Hanging with Coop and Jeff on WTSMTV.com, Tuesdays at noon. with Mike Davis, and Mike Davis believes it's to his advantage to not tell the television crew who's his starting lineup. So it was very weird prepping for this because there are no, there's no biological information. I should say biographical information. I can kind of figure out the biology of the players, but no website's ever had DNA showing or anything like that. But the biographical. You're asking for a whole lot. I am, I am. asking for DNA. Yeah, I am. That is a little strange. But <laughs> there was no biographical information. And then I didn't know the starters. So if I ever drift into characters from Cheers, you'll understand why. Rattlers have the football right now. It's first and ten after the kettle run. Inside the 15-yard line. Hand off Miles. Cut back at the 10. At the 5. Gets up against the wall. Dives into the end zone. But the re referee on the side says he was touched when he touched the wall. And therefore, it's going to be close to a first and goal. Calhoun gets the credit. Here's your rule. Touch the wall on your own. You're live. Get knocked into the wall. You're down. 
And so you look at Jamal Miles. He's another guy hey, that's Rattlers been fans, around Steve McCollum here from the- forever. And, again, as you said, dropped a couple passes last week, but this guy is money. Yes. He's got stick him on his hands. He he's always finds a way to move the ball forward. And he's sitting there at 5 10, 180 pounds. He's, he's got to be mid-30s yep. by now, but still producing at a very high level. First and goal from the college hash. Here he is, Miles. Great block, but he's frozen as everyone was able to collapse and get him. Leading the charge on that one was Calhoun, and it'll be second and goal. That offensive line trying to run behind Chris Martinez, the new man on the block. 6'4", 310 pounds. Cole Carter is the center. He was first team all IFL last year. Lamar Mady, second team all IFL last year. Then you're asking your boy uh, Shannon Brooks, all 5'11", 210 pounds to go lead block. And I think that's what Kevin Guy says. Hey, we're going to give you the ball, but every once in a while you yep. got to go block somebody. I just felt like that was a fantastic play for all 16 people on the field. Didn't work for the Rattlers, but, man, they were throwing some weight around. Little pitch play to Brooks. Cuts back. Helmet on the field. He gets tripped up on the play at the last second by Hampton, and it's going to be third and goal, and Miles comes back to get his lid. Kind of interesting. We, we've we always talked about the way the field shrinks as you get close to the goal line. Uh, the windows are tighter, yep. and they close quicker. And so I think that's why Kevin Guy, new quarterback, trying to run the football into the end zone. But this Vegas team is ready for the challenge. So right now on your screen it says first down. It's officially third and goal for the Rattlers from the five-yard line. Houston stops in his motion. He was open for a second. Kettle's trying to find him. He rolls right. He's lost 20 yards and throws it away out of the pocket, avoiding the intentional grounding. Well done by Kettle. It'll be fourth down. Miles, the intended receiver, up against the wall. Three receiver route. Again, if you just survey the end zone for maybe a split second, you have a receiver open. Otherwise, everybody's blanketed. Hey, you got to give credit to these these defensive backs for Vegas, they are covering up yes. the uh, Rattler wide receivers almost every pass. It's going to be interesting to see if Coach Guy makes some kind of change at halftime because you've nailed that point on we're used to somebody being open. Right. And right now, Vegas doing a fantastic job. Kind of a tough snap, but a great job on the hold by Kettle. And the kick is good, so the Rattlers now have a touchdown lead. It's 10-3, to Arizona Rattlers, 11.45 to go in the first half. Dale Hellestray, Doug Franz, this is Rattlers Football on WTSMTV.com. Hello all, Isaiah is Jackson Jr. here from Iowa West. Tune in every Monday through Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. as we get into all your local and national teams in the NFL, MLB, and NBA. We also have some fun segments as well. We get into GM mode, factor foolishness, swipe right, and we also look at all the rumors taking place in the sports world today. All that and more every Monday through Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. here at WTSM TV. Honor is a steady rhythm, a beat that inspires remarkable medical professionals to work with passion and purpose. A tireless dedication to the lives we serve is what drives all of us at Honor Health. A shared focus on doing what we love. Honor Health. Honor above all. I'm Dr. Pamela Lund, Director of Sports and Orthopedic Imaging at Simon Med Imaging. I've been reading sports MRI studies for patients and athletes at all levels for over 20 years. When you're injured, an accurate diagnosis can mean the difference between chronic pain or pain-free enjoyment of your life and sports activities. At Simon Med, we treat you just like all of our elite athletes, with state-of-the-art equipment, precise interpretation, and compassion. Dale, you had said you kind of judge the crowd based on the upper deck. And there's a lot of people in the upper deck. We've got some gaps in the lower bowl. And I've been here for hundreds of hockey games. And it's interesting, it was always full on the upper deck. Because on the west side, hey, we can afford the upper deck. We can't afford the lower deck on the west side in hockey. But fans, I can tell you, you can afford a Rattlers game. 
because there's so many different pricing levels. Please come on out and join us. Well, and the other thing about the lower level is a lot of those sections, you get free food drink. Oh, yeah, and look so at that. Sometimes you're underneath the bowl of the stadium. I wouldn't mind that right now. Chapman will take it deep in his own end zone. Cuts at the five, and he's got a seam. Tries to juke the uh, kicker uh, and steps uh, right uh, over him. But the kicker gave enough time to be able to get uh, Omari Alexander back in just the right moment to save a touchdown. My goodness gracious. We talked about David, the Achilles heel of this football team for the Rattlers. Kickoff return. and. You got you got to give a lot of credit when, when you when you get a kicker out there really giving up his body yes to prevent a touchdown and and while it wasn't called tripping boy uh, it was close the thing is with Evans he's putting the ball seven yards yes. deep and they're not line drives he's doing his job this is a major weakness for this team luckily the defense has been tremendous through three halves of football this season. Technically a quarter. We still got 11 minutes to go in this third half of the season. And as soon as I say that, there's a potential touchdown on a wide open re wheel route in which Connor Taylor could not keep up with Wimbush at all. But we get to breathe, Dale, at second down. Antonio Wimbush, he runs a little wheel route, a little out, draws the attention of Connor Taylor, and he gets up the field just overthrown by the smallest of margins. Otherwise, that was a walk in touchdown. Johnson, a much better running quarterback. I've seen Mancuso play. He's a better runner, but Mancuso has the touch. So it's interesting you make that decision if you're Mike Davis. That's a touchdown, in my opinion, with Mancuso. Fake the handoff. Here's that running ability, and guess what he could do? Run it right up the gut for a touchdown, and now you see exactly why Mike Davis went with Johnson at quarterback. Wait till you see the block by Moses Mallory. Watch big 77 right oh, there. Good eye. Oh, my goodness. 6'4". They list him at 335. Remember, some of these guys are, are going to lie about their weight on the <laughs> lower end. And the white jerseys don't do big guys any favors. <laughs> but what a tremendous block by Mallory on that play. Now, you're still of the age where the Cowboys believed yes. the blue jerseys we're bad luck. Bad luck. Yes. Now that's all changed. Yes. But that means you were in the white jerseys a lot. Yes. Extra point attempt is up, and it is good. So we're tied. It's 10 to 10, 9.39 to go. Second quarter. Dale Hellestray, Doug Franz, watching the Rollers with you on WTSMTV.com. <laughs> For a light beer, and you found gold. Modelo Oro, the light beer with a smooth, elevated taste, perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oro, the gold standard of light beer. Hi, it's Parker Weinthal again with EXP Realty. Not only do I help first-time home buyers, but I also work with those looking for second homes, vacation homes, and even investment properties. Give me a call or visit our website today. We're extremely comfortable up here. Huh. We both have stools now. I've been standing for a while, and boy, I'm a lot more. No, a we got to We got to paint a picture. <laughs> we got to paint a picture. Your well, wife was up here waiting on you, hand and foot. <laughs> she put together the the prettiest boards I've oh, ever yeah. seen. Oh yeah, great penmanship, great handwriting. And you're complaining about you can't see the other. Okay, end, okay. I, I, well, I have two complaints. One. <laughs> 
uh, she, she hasn't found the thermostat in here. Squib <laughs> kick over to the near side. It's going to be picked up by Miles. And there's no beer in the suite. I mean, come on. <laughs> Miles goes up the middle, takes the shot, but he's able to spin away for just a second. It seemed like he might find another round of daylight. But he gets it out to his own 20. Calhoun will get credit for the tackle for the Nighthawks. Just that uncanny knack for him to be able to bounce off tacklers and He's one of those guys since the first time I saw him. Every time he has the ball in his hands, he kind of scoot towards the front of your seat a little bit. Yeah, cause, yeah. Because he has a chance to do something spectacular. See what the Rattlers can do here to break this 10-10 tie with a little under 10 minutes to go in the first half. Set up right now and trips right. Houston did not get the start last week. A little banged up in camp. He's got the start this week and has a touchdown pass. He's going to run a post pattern and then sit it down. He was open. Kettle didn't see him, and Kettle rolls out and then gets bumped out of bounds. Still picks up a positive game. And another tackle for Big Lee Autry. That nice. is I, I got to ask uh, other general managers around <laughs> football, why is this guy in this league? He's fantastic. I, I love the way he runs back and forth, covers the entire field. That's the first play where I saw a wide receiver wide open. Yeah, yeah. And, and Kettle missed him. As you said, Houston, right in the middle of the field, there's a linebacker about 15 yards away from him, but you got to make yep. that throw at that time. It's really a testament. There's some high-quality players in this league. We're just watching Autry run around, Houston getting open, and if Sneed was here, he probably would have been able to see him. Brooks is able to spin away from the tackle and picks up an extra seven yards. That was easily going to be about a two-foot loss, and the strength of Brooks is able to power through to make it a manageable third down. What an athletic play by number 11, Gardner, here. He reaches out, not able to get him on the ground, just tremendous effort. But Gardner, 6'3 and a half, 265 pounds, and able to to make a play like that, uh, you're right. There's tremendous athletes on this mm -hmm. field, and they're all looking for an opportunity to go to that next level. I've noticed a trend. You're not biased to the Rattlers. You're biased to any man over 265. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kettle will keep it. Goes up the left side. He's able to get the first down. Chapman runs him out of bounds right there. It's first and 10. But anybody in here that's 260 or better, you found a friend in Dale Hillis, uh, right? You, you have. Hey. Tremendous job on this uh, by the offensive line here. Lamar Mady, the left guard. Cole Carter, the center, getting up to that next level. Throw blocks again. Cole Carter, I said it all last season. He's six foot seven inches tall. And usually your centers are six two, maybe six three, because it's such a leverage position. But Cole Carter, for the most part, makes it work at six seven, and I think he's even a little taller. Handoff? No. Keeper, Kettle, using Brooks as a blocker. Kind of gets a juke inside the five-yard line. Might be close to a first down. Ford will get credit for the tackle. And this will be very close. We're waiting to see an official signal. Is it second and goal or first and goal? Or excuse me. Nope, they're going to say second and about uh, four feet to pick up the first. Tremendous job. But Lamar Mady pulls around. It's kind of a, a three-man offensive line power. Pulling the backside guard. He's leading up through there. And then Kettle has the opportunity. He can hand it off or keep it himself. And so far we've seen this afternoon, it seems like he wants to keep the ball. There is a Rattler that was struggling for a second, and it looks to be Shannon Brooks. And Shannon Brooks is walking off and he is an integral part of this team you can see him right there on your screen the trainer asks him what's up and he doesn't really want to talk to her right now which is a sign that says i want to go back in you know what i'm saying if i'm shannon brooks i'm saying i'm tired of blocking coach <laughs> every the dang ball <laughs> oh Kettle puts two men into motion. It's going to end up with four on the left side hand off to miles he's got a seam touchdown rattlers All you've been doing, Dale, is talking about the offensive line, and they deserve their flowers today. Again, wide zone. Who are you going to run behind? Lamar Mady, for my money, I've never understood why he's not on the next level. But you see him, 6'4", 305 pounds, super athletic. Look at him just ride the defensive lineman out of there. Tremendous block by him. Carter got his guy. And then you got Jamal Miles, who's very, very adept 
at reading where to run the football. And I'm sure a lineman loves having it Miles because you don't have to block for very long with Miles. Kick is up, and it is good. So it's 17-10, 531 to go. And so far, what we're seeing from the Rattlers is a very strong offensive line and a quarterback that does a great job using that line. And then, like I said, you don't have to block very long for number two, Jamal Miles. No, you don't. And, again, you see this come right into your living room. Look at the way that just parts right at the right time. That's the timing of the offensive line. And Jamal Miles. Doug, I don't know if you know this, but I got to block. I've been able to block for a couple pretty good running backs in my life. Eric Dickerson at SMU, uh, Thurman Thomas in Buffalo, some guy named Emmett Smith. And and while I will say it in jest that I don't think you would have heard of any of them without me, uh, they do make your job a little bit easier because you do not have to hold a block for very long as an offensive lineman. Now, if we bring Emmett in, if we bring Thomas in on one of these conversations, are yeah. they going to agree with that? They're, they're going to agree with, uh, well, I got a Rolex from Emmett for okay. early in the league in rushing. Okay. Uh, Eric would say he would go play along with me and say, okay. yeah, I don't okay. think anybody would know, knew me at SMU without okay. you. Got to play a couple years with him. So, again, it, it all goes hand in hand. But I just love the way Kevin Guy offensive lines come together, and the number one thing is they're going to be physical. And not only is this offensive line physical, but it's very athletic. And one of the real highlights of this game is this is his third quarterback in three games, and he's had to adjust, and they're running it in a power running game today. Kickoff this time is going to be stopped at the 15, and then kind of powered through by Chapman to be able to get it close to the 20. That's not ideal, Dale, but it's so much better than what the average has been. I think we're okay with it. Baby steps. And yes. obviously you worked on it all week. And a little, like I said before the game, a little bit of it was effort. A little bit of it was assignment. And, again, that's one thing. And then you got to find the right guys. Who, yes. Who's going to go down there and throw their body around and, and stop the kickoff return? That's still a work in progress. On your screen for a second was one of those guys, Dante Merriweather who does an awful lot for this team. He officially plays the bandit linebacker. It's kind of a hybrid position based on Kevin Guy's love of Nick Saban, the star linebacker position with the Alabama Crimson Tide. Two receivers into motion, so it ends up as a two-by-two -two formation. Connor Taylor isn't able to get the sack. Johnson breaks free and then shovels it forward for the first down, and a crazy play results in a touchdown for his running back, Wyndham. That was amazing. Now, whether or not this stands, there are no flags on the field. We're an extra point away from being tied. Amazing. Look at the free. Taylor usually is very, very solid tackler when he's rushing the quarterback. But you've got to come under control. You can't just run 100 miles an hour, especially when you have an athletic quarterback. We've seen that already in the first half. Johnson can move around a little yep. bit, come under control, rather than the spectacular hit. Tackle him and get him on the ground. What a shovel. I mean, to keep your eyes downfield in that much pressure is just fantastic. Quarter play, terrible snap. The kicker's running with it, thinking about passing. It's a fumble. Now the Rattlers can return this for a point. Merriweather's got it. They're going to say he got pushed into the boards, however, and they blow the play dead. Yes, that sounds weird. In the outdoor game, you can return that for a two-point conversion. Indoor game, that's worth one point. So keep your eye on number eight for the Rattlers. Does he get pushed into the boards? Yes, he does. Yes. Good call by the official. They were right on it, and it probably saved a point, and it would have been 18-16. Instead, the score sits at 17-16 with 3.50 to go in the first half. There's been some, some craziness so far today, Dale. There has a home opener. We've talked about that first game for Vegas. I, I I, I was a long snapper for a lot, uh, a lot of my life. Well, since I was eight, eight to thirty-nine years old, I don't know if I've ever seen a snap land on the other side of the kicker. <laughs> I mean, that's one of those. A lot of times you go, th I think I, I think that was close. That one, I think Mallory just said, "Screw it." I have no idea where that thing went. We. Had a couple little issues. Isaiah Jackson is our sideline reporter, so hopefully in a couple weeks we'll be able to get some interviews with everybody that scores these touchdowns. But 
Isaiah, if you're right now watching the broadcast, I think I'm going to speak for Dale knowing Dale's going to demand some O-line interviews <laughs> coming up on some of these touchdowns. Enough of these quarterback analysts who <laughs> just slobber all over an average quarterback. Oh, you still miss Dan Deerdorf, don't you? The yeah. days oh, of Monday yes. Night Football. Yeah, and John Madden. When all they wanted to do was talk about the big guys. Just missed a deuce as it misses wide right. Miles watches it sail out of bounds. Huge advantage and big risk. First time it goes out of bounds, spotted at the 20. Every successive time you kick it out of bounds, spotted at the 25. However, Dale, if that ball was about four feet to the left, we got a tie. We got a, a lead right now for the Nighthawks because yes. they would have scored two points on the deuce. You get two points on a deuce, and again, and most of these kickers, it's not it's not the distance that will get them. Yep. It's if you take a look at the goalpost, I I believe they're about half as wide as yep. NFL crossbar is the same, but yep. you're exactly right on the uprights. And it's it's very narrow, and if you get down on the field, it looks like it's a pinhole you're trying to get <laughs> yep. through. See what the Rattlers do. Right now, they've got a trips right formation. Brooks is back in the game, and he takes the handoff off the motion as a receiver, gets swallowed up pretty quickly, and gets brought down by Jackson. What is your thoughts on a big guy like Jackson wearing jersey number zero? Is that all right? You know what? It's, it, it, it's Our always been swimming? interesting. The first guy I ever saw that I realized was we had a guy named Jerry Ball. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. NFL for a number of years. He was recruited as a fullback. So he's number 34. Okay. But he's a nose tackle. And he got up to about 330 <laughs> pounds at number 34. We always oh. thought that looked weird. Kendall finds his man over the middle. That looked to be Houston. He got tackled so fast I wasn't sure, and I was dead wrong. That's a two and not a seven. Jamal Miles makes the reception. Caesar's the one that hit him so quick I couldn't see the jersey number. But it is a Rattler's first down. See, I think you can – Probably blame your wife for that. She didn't point it to never quick enough. She's in charge of defense. Oh, She's, defense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Blame her so for offense, that's, Well, the problem is <laughs> my only job is the offense, and I blew it. She nailed who got the tackle. <laughs> There's Gibbons in the near side slot. He usually fakes a corner out and runs to the post when he does this move. He does go inside. He's open, and they miss him. They do find a receiver on the far side of the field. Caesar again goes in to make the tackle. Brooks with his second reception of the game. But, boy, I would have liked to see a little more patience and find Gibbons. Well, what's interesting here is the whole timing of the indoor football league. So as we wind down towards the one-minute warning, this game moves so fast. Yes. It moves so fast. And then once it hits the one-minute mark, then everything slows yep. down because then it goes back to almost regular outdoor football uh, league rules. Let's see if they can drag this thing all the way down to a minute and then put a little pressure on Vegas. If you're a college football fan, we play by the NCAA rule book except for rule modifications for the IFL. Play fake to Miles. Kettle will keep it, gets through the 10, kind of stutter-stepped and struggled his way down to the 5, looking like somebody leaving the bar at 3 in the morning and goes down. But it's good for a first down. It'll be first and goal as Harris couldn't bring him down in front of the line. Be interesting to see if Kevin Guy calls another play before the one-minute warning. I think he's tempted to let this thing go all the way down. Well, guess Make what? Vegas use their timeouts. Alex Smith, or Mike Davis, excuse me, was on your level. Yeah. I'm not going to let you run this thing down, Dale Hellestray. So Mike Davis called a timeout right in your face. Okay, well, the clock kept running, so you, you were ahead of me. Uh, I do have to ask you, the stumbling out of the bar at 3 o'clock, I don't know what that looks like, but <laughs> obviously from experience you do. Uh, <laughs> no, my secret was having two daughters that yeah. were quickly of age to say, okay, now you're here to drive daddy. Now, did you, did you give them a, an Uber tip? Did you give them some money? Oh, what? shame. Listen, I provide shame. home. Oh, I provide you're food. not one of those. <laughs> you're not. I got two daughters, too. I do not give an allowance. Oh, uh, I didn't give an allowance either, brother. Yeah. Come to get you at the bar. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh. Hey. I'll can, drive you halfway home and leave get, you there. <laughs> <laughs> they can get a part-time job. It's all good. It's Jeez. all good. They can earn their money. Find out a little bit more about Doug. <laughs> 
Oh, my kids are extremely <laughs> important to me, and so is beer. It's just a battle between which one is winning that day. See if they keep an eye on Gibbons this time. He's on the slot on the left of your screen. No, handoff. Brooks breaks a tackle. Can he get in? He stretches, and the referee says he's down. Looked like he dove over the man and got into the end zone. Chapman agrees with the call. Let's watch the replay and keep an eye on the knee of Brooks on this dive. I don't think you want to score here if you're the Rattler. And his, his right elbow was down. Right. I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with what just happened. What I don't understand is if you're Vegas, why do you call timeout the previous play but not this play? I, that's a great point because I agreed with the timeout <laughs> yes. call. They that, didn't do it now, so they let it run to the one-minute right. warning. And you could have just let it run down and have all three timeouts. Yes. Well done right by you. So we'll take a break right along with them. 17-16 is your score. Rattlers with a one-point lead and poised to score. Can they do it? Let's find out next. This is the Rattlers Television Network on WTSMTV.com. You came looking for a light beer, and you found gold. Modelo Oro, the light beer with a smooth, elevated taste. Perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oro, the gold standard of light beer. Hello, I'm Parker Weinthal with the Rosen Team, brokered by eXp Realty. Are you a first-time home buyer? Guiding my clients through the home buying process is a passion of mine. And believe it or not, it's easier than you think. Give me a call or visit our website today. Spooner has been revolutionizing our community's experiences with physical therapy and hand therapy in the Valley since 1990. Make Spooner your first stop for your injury prevention, recovery, and treatment needs. Through specialized rehabilitation, personalized treatment plans, and functional performance trainings, our team is your team. Visit SpoonerPT.com to find one of our Valley-wide locations near you. Rattlers fans, thanks a ton for watching us right here on the home of the Rattlers, WTSMTV.com. Now, do you want more Rattlers coverage? You get it tomorrow morning. WTSMTV.com has four hours of local sports programming tomorrow morning with the main event from 8 to 10 and me, Doug Franz Unplugged, presented by Whirlwind Golf Club at Wild Horse Pass. Exclusive Rattlers info tomorrow morning at 6 on WTSMTV.com. As soon as we get back, we're about ready. The referee's waiting for the back jug to say, let's do it. He gets the signal, play clock goes. Rattlers don't want to wait. They want to score pretty quick here. Jamal Miles goes into motion, quarterback keeper, and Kettle runs right into a man and gets sandwiched right there. Calhoun just destroyed him, and it's second down. And maybe they weren't in a hurry to score with him running right into Calhoun. Well, I tell you what, that was a huge hit. My goodness, and it looked like for a split second that there's going to be an opening there, but really nice job. you got to give a little credit. Not get credit for the tackle, but Maurice Jackson, 6'2", 305 pounds, kind of plugged the hole a yeah, little bit, allowed his buddies to come behind him and make the tackle. But, yeah, now you've used two timeouts if you're Vegas. Mm -hmm. As long as you get in the end zone, this is what Kevin and I used to always discuss, is like because he is famous for waiting until the last second. To, to score a touchdown. And yeah. As long as you score a touchdown, that's great. But if you don't score a touchdown and you waited that long. Yeah. it's I'm going to call it third and five. And I say third and five, and you go, well, wait a minute. Look where the ball is. It's not third and five. No, third and five feet. We got the ball just a hair in front of that two-yard line. So you got about five feet to go, and we'll see with the Dale Hellestray theory, do they move it? and then get stopped at the one and then try it again. Nighthawks took another timeout. They've got one timeout remaining to stop the clock. We'll see if the Rattlers can punch it in. Brooks in an old-fashioned standard I formation. Under center is Kettle. He hands off to Miles, and Miles gets dumped right there immediately. Another play by Maurice Jackson, who has really played well throughout the game but dominated this drive. And just to the point that you made, they get the all the timeouts wasted for the Nighthawks, but now you're staring down fourth down. Fourth down. And, again, you go in and score. Well, now it's going to be hard-pressed on them to score with 50 seconds left, no timeouts. But if you don't score, and, again, I promise you, Vegas is calling those timeouts to have time left after the Rattlers score. Yep. They're not planning. IFL football teams will give you the verbiage of, oh, yeah, we're going to play defense. You get inside the five-yard line first down yep. and into our football league. You're going to score 99% of the time. 
And I, I've always thought this situation, I thought for Kevin Guy, this would be four down territory. They, but I think he's seen the last three that's plays. That's true. And he lost a yard on that one, so maybe he doesn't like fourth and four. Officially officially listed at fourth and goal, but for our purposes, it's fourth and four, so he brings in Evitz to kick. Plenty of time to snap it. A little bit of a high snap. Good hold by Kettle, and it goes right through, and the Arizona Rattlers now have a four-point lead. Boy, the Nighthawks. A last place team last year, and I asked Mike Davis last night, why do you think you're going to be better? And he said, our locker room. And the reason why Coach Davis said that is he said, we lost seven guys to the CFL at about week three, and we never developed a team chemistry. And the Nighthawks, for about halfway through the season last year, Dale, were right in the playoff race. Right. And then everything just kind of fell apart. And he's got to be thrilled to take on a six-time world champion in his opening game for the year and only be down by four with a chance to take the lead in the, before the end of the first half. It's always been fascinating to me. I've been on the worst team in the league my first year at Buffalo. We were 2-14, and 14 and we sucked. <laughs> I've obviously been on some really good I could have done the math when you said 2-14, <laughs> yeah. but I appreciate the adjective. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> and, and, and I've been on some really good football teams. And chemistry is one of the most important things. But it's one of the things you don't control. Yes. You can say, oh, I'm going to bring good guys in the locker room. Like, I believe the Phoenix Suns have good guys in their locker room. Yeah, yeah. There's something missing chemistry-wise with that group. And you're so right. you're blessed if you're able to create that in your locker room. One of the greatest debates in sports now because an analytics guy will tell you yeah. you get chemistry by winning. So use math to get winners, which nobody in the locker room agrees with. Far side kick it. Oh, that's a beautiful play defensively for the Arizona Rattlers. When you see this replay, the way Connor Taylor stands up his blocker, runs right through the blocker, and makes the tackle, it is fantastic. You talk about a time. Oh, and, and yes. You talk about a time to cover a kick right there for the Rattlers, and again. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Connor Taylor, hair flying, guns a blazing, a tremendous physical tackle inside the 10 yard line. So let's see if Kevin Guy uses his timeouts in a similar way that Mike Davis did to create an opportunity for the Rattlers to get another possession. In a sense, you can easily call this first and 39 or 41, really, to try to get it down the field for a touchdown. Johnson still in. It's quarterback quick drop looking no one's open he's asking somebody to run a post looking throws a lob and it's able to be caught on the near side by Randolph and he gets shoved out of bounds at the 14 yard lines barely over the outstretched hands of the Mac linebacker on that one which is Dante Merriweather not so sure I agree with this they rush to the Rattlers do they drop big Harold Love into coverage I don't know who he's who he's going to cover other than his shadow and that might even be difficult. No pressure on the quarterback. <laughs> able to stand back there, survey the field, and throw the ball late. I don't like that defensive play call right there. Let's see if they get a little more aggressive. Three receivers to his left. One up against the boundary. Bad snap is loose. Fumble recovered by the Rattlers. What an enormous change of events. First and goal with the 15 poised to score. And instead, it's Arizona football with big Harold Love getting in there, Connor Taylor helping out. Officially, it's going to be Taylor with the recovery of the football and Love with the recovery of Taylor. <laughs> Again, when you talk about first games, you talk about little mistakes like that. Everybody takes quarterback center exchange just eight. Everybody does it. There's never an issue with it. Until there is an issue with it. It almost seemed like it was a communications error because yes. that was not a bad shotgun snap. That looked like he just put the ball right on his own b backside well, that's what thinking the say. quarterback was under center. It was almost like the quarterback was in shotgun center, thought he was underneath. Yeah. Now, as a center, I don't know how you don't know the quarterback. Yeah, underneath. I don't know how you centers ignore <laughs> hands in the groin, but I guess you get used to it. The rest of society does not. Kettle to throw. Good blocking, good time, and a great play oh. defensively to be able to come free. Calhoun 
broke that play up and almost had the interception. And Kevin Guy is furious. He was right in the grill of Kettle, wanting that ball thrown up much, much sooner. Well, much sooner, but I also think that he's thinking – he had a receiver. I'm trying to see his number. I do not like these numbers for the Rams. <laughs> I think you're talking about Kobe Smith, number 12? Yeah, uh, number 12 on a go route. Yes. And I think he had his defender beat. And, again, this is where a Powell might take that shot yeah, down. If yeah. you know, Kettle's going to be a little bit more apprehensive to do that. Good point. Second down. Trips right. Kettle to throw. Looking. Throws near side. Boy, he's got Houston wide open for the first down. And then very intelligent play in the indoor game. The football has to be extended over the wall to stop the clock. Calhoun gets credit for the tackle. First down, Rattlers. You also got to love when an athlete can take a butt chewing. Yep. And they go out and perform. Because there's so many guys that you see out there mentally aren't strong enough to deal with the coach yelling at them. And they just shut down. Yep. Nice job by Garrett Kettle coming back out, finding the open receiver, firing her in there, keeping this drive alive. Play clock was started a little early. They had a little bit of an issue with the change, so pump the play clock. It's at 40 seconds. It should have gone to 25, so advantage Rattlers, but they're certainly not going to wait. They want to move. Kettle has a lane to run if he wants it, and he does. He asks Miles for a block, gets it, stretches the ball out of bounds to stop the clock, should get credit for the first down. Calhoun with another tackle, but it was about half a yard too late, first and 10 Rattlers. And all you're worried about down there is what's going on with the this, this skill guys. I'm watching Martinez, who took a shot here late, slow getting up. The right guard looks like it's either an ankle or a knee. But the other thing we need to point out, Doug, is in that last minute, we've talked about the difference between the last minute and the rest of the half or rest of the game. You go out and touch the dashboard, clock stops Yep. yep. Uh, in the last minute. If it's not the last minute, the clock continues to run. And so far, Isaiah Houston and the quarterback, Kettle, have done a fantastic job of clock management. 16.9 remaining. Kettle to throw, looking. Steps up in the pocket to avoid the pressure. Still trying to get away, and he can't get away from Maurice Jackson. Now coach is going to have to call a timeout after the sack, and it'll be second down. Again, I, I, I told you, Doug, last play, Martinez got dinged up a little bit. Offensive lineman usually don't want to come out of the game. This time, you can see, can't move his feet. Obviously, a really good pass rusher. We've talked about number zero already, Maurice uh, Well, here's Jackson. the issue, and I'm glad you brought him up. When you watch the replay, Maurice Jackson makes a great play. He's able, he's able to make the tackle, then jumps up and celebrates. And it looked fine while he celebrated. Then about ooh, eight seconds later, he starts a bad hobble, little bit of a limp. Then... The coach says, we're bringing somebody in for you. And after that, he just goes straight down. And when you see the trainer doing stretches, I have to imagine it was a slow developing cramp because when you watch number zero, watch his legs. I don't see any twisting. I don't see any problem. So this is a – oh, there's a little cramp. I grabbed him a little bit. Okay, uh, it's still there. It's getting worse. We all know the full body cramp. Oh, no, here it comes. Old man disease in the middle of the night. Oh, no. Okay, wait, I'm going to need a little bit of a break. Oh, the crash getting worse. Uh, I don't really want to come out. I don't want to come out. Uh, all right, I'm done. <laughs> That's a calf cramp, and hopefully they uh, have IV set up. Uh, early season in, in yep. Dallas, we used to have about it five is warm tables. In here. You'd walk in, you'd see you'd see five guys at a time, arms out, IVs being squeezed in, <laughs> then the next five move in. <laughs> because you can't drink enough liquid right now yep. to stop the cramping. I am assuming that you're not going to have cramps keep him out. He'll be back in the second half. Rattler's trying to score. Limited time, nine seconds. Kettle to throw. They set up a screen. It's caught by Miles, and he gets close to the first down marker. Rattlers have another timeout. They've actually got two. Kevin Guy runs down the field and gets the timeout called. Hampton gets credit for the tackle. No first down, yeah. so it'll be third and about two. But really, I don't think you've got time for two plays, so we'll just call it third and goal, even though technically it's not. Martinez limping off the field now. You know, I don't think it's a cramp with him. Uh, we'll see if they can get him patched together, but offensive linemen don't want to come out. Sometimes the coaches have to pay attention yep. and say, you know what, you can't do your job. Our, the next guy up is better than you at 50%. 
almost every red zone play for the Rattlers has been a run. But with four seconds left and the assumption that this is the last play of the half, irrelevant of the Rattlers still holding one timeout, does Coach kick it or does he allow Kettle to throw? Well, definitely looks like four seconds is just not enough time. You would hate to come up empty and not have a chance to kick this that field This is interesting. Goal. I, I, I kind of feel like if it's, if it's Snead is healthy, I think they go for this. But you know what? Let's just get points on the board and let Kettle get settled in for the second half. Let's see if they can add three and have a touchdown lead. It is dead middle on, and the Rattlers do have that touchdown lead. 23-16, to 16, up by seven at the first half. What would you say is your number one first half takeaway? Uh, you know what? Resiliency. It almost looks like it's a Baltimore-Pittsburgh uh, AFC North tilt, yeah. the way the, the defense is are standing up to the offenses of both teams. So um, I think it's going to be interesting to see the adjustments made. Somehow, some way, some of those receivers have got to get open a little quicker for Kettle. The offensive line's been great. Defense has got to be happy with uh, only 16 points. Uh -huh. Still a little bit of a special teams issue. Yes, I, again, but when, when they needed it, when they needed coverage, they got coverage. And I think you'll just see that be a work in progress. Second half, what do you expect? Well, Kettle's got to, be, I think, got to come loose a little bit. I okay. think Kettle's got to throw the ball down the field, take some chances here in the second half. So we'll see what happens in the second half. Up next, Steve McCollum's going to take you through halftime, give you his observations and a little bit of insight of what to see. We'll be back with second half action coming up in just a couple of minutes. He's Dale Hellestray. I'm Doug Franz. Steve McCollum next. This is Rattlers Football on WTSMTV.com. Hey, Rattlers fans, it's Steve McCollum from the main event, and you might recognize this guy, Dale Hellestray. Dale, what do we do from 8 to 10 here Monday through Friday on WTSM-TV? Where we kick everything off with the Arizona Rattlers home opener with the new arena and get you started there. Obviously, a lot of college basketball, too. Of course, Diamondbacks coming your way, Coyotes, Suns, and more. So join us Monday through Friday here on WTSM-TV. Burrito Express started with my father about 25 years ago. He got laid off and decided that he needed to do something to provide for his family. My brother and I were older teens, so literally we decided we're going to start out of his house. So we delivered uh, menus in a square mile area, literally started delivering burritos out of our home in Mesa, Arizona. And after about a month, he said, let's do this. Went and found his first location, and believe it or not, that's how it started. We started with one location back in 1995. Now we're where we are now. Coming up on Tuesday at noon on Hanging with Coop and Jeff, Coop's back, and we'll get you ready for the start of the baseball season as the Diamondbacks look to defend their NL title. Also, we're in the Sweet 16 of March Madness. All that coming up on Hanging with Coop and Jeff on WTSMTV.com, Tuesdays at noon. And it's halftime here at Desert Diamond Arena. Of course, Arizona Rattlers with the lead going into halftime. And here are the first half highlights. And the first half highlights, of course. Now we have a third member of our broadcast team. Unfortunately, Izzy, not seeing you much today, but you're down on the sidelines. 
And uh, seeing what's going on down there, tell us about this first half. What was happening down on the Rattlers bench? Well, the great, the greatest thing about the Rattlers bench is they're still in good spirits. I mean, Harold Love even mentioned to the team, we should be up at least 21 to 7 at this point in time. But look at how the, the team has got onto the, uh, got onto the field. Uh, Gary Kettle has been a pretty fairly decent so far. Uh, Kevin Guys definitely had to get it to him a couple times. But <laughs> okay. at the end of the day, they're going to pick it back up, and it looks pretty good so far. Well, let's talk about it. Kettle, of course, had a couple mistakes in this first part of the game. Uh, was able to rebound a little bit. Uh, what is it, Coach Guy and everybody's reacting favorably to him? Oh, uh, well, they're just pretty much worried about him missing a couple reads. He's missing a couple guys that are wide open, and then you had that uh, unfortunate uh, muffed, muffed, uh, the, the, muffed wait, snap from, the from snap, Cole yeah. Carter. And you had Kevin Guy pretty much going to both of them and saying that we this is not winning football here. Yeah. So they are going to clean it up as Kevin Guy wants so to. So on the on defensive bench. side, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, 24 for the Rattlers. Got a little bit of scuffle down there. Penalties on both players for Vegas and there. I saw a little bit. I was down there as well, and I saw a little bit of a fight going on in, that, in the hallway, which happens in football. Yes. A little bit of arguing. What's going on with the defense? Well, just looking at the Rattlers and seeing the defense speak. I mean, Harold Love, I think, has been really, really vocal. And he's looking at these Nighthawks, and he's saying that, man, they are looking a little shaken up. So he's looking at to attack them as hard as possible and to get them off the game a little bit as well. I mean, it sounds perfect. So, I mean, Kevin Guy, you see his reaction. You see the other coaches. A lot of uh, could be distractions today being at this new arena. Are you seeing any distractions or is it just these guys trying to work within the system that Kevin Guy has? Oh, it's all just working into the system. I mean, they're even getting into it, they're even getting into it with the fans. I mean, there's a whole lot of fan interactions really? with the Rattlers football team and just the fans in general. They're trying to keep the spirits up in the Desert Diamond Arena, and it's been amazing so far. So uh, you're down there at the bench. You're, you see the fans down there. What's the fans' interaction like? Is it loud? What's going on? Crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy, and I don't even think that's even the right word. I mean, they love their Rattlers football, yeah. and they are insanely energetic, and it's a whole lot of fun down there. I mean, it is amazing because uh, uh, upper level is pretty full here. Lower level, not as full, but, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that it's not loud down here. You know, right. so up here at our level, it's loud. Fans are passionate, of course. They're learning this team. Uh, when I was down there, I was talking to a lot of fans, and they were just, like, trying to learn their, kick their players, right, the kicker. Uh, yep. The quarterback situation, a lot of people were asking me where, where Snead is, right? And I'd explain to him, like, yeah, he's injured. He's out for a week or a week to three weeks uh, coming up here. So, I mean, overall with Kittle, is there any interaction between Lorenzo Brown, the backup, the veteran backup they brought in this week, and Kittle at all? Uh, so far, they've just been uh, interacting just to and from just as they uh, pass along by. It hasn't been too much interaction so far, Too not too much uh, veteran talk yeah. in terms of uh, help for uh, George Kittle, but they've been working out just fine, and I think that'll be an adjustment yeah. come the second yeah. half. The other rookie that's out there, of course, at guard, uh, uh, Chris Martinez from Arizona State University, his first game. How's the line play going? Other than Cole Carver, you know, bad snap, got Kevin Guy's been on him a little bit. What about the guards out there? Oh, they've been looking pretty amazing. Actually, Kevin Guy is actually pretty happy about how his offensive line has stepped up in this yeah. game. It's mainly just been the inconsistency at that quarterback position as well as on the defensive side. Right, well. I mean, uh, special teams, is, is he happier about special teams this week? Oh, <laughs> loves the kicker. <laughs> no, that, he has no problem with what's going on with the special teams so far. I, to be honest, that's when I've seen him at his most calmest. <laughs> really? <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> I mean, look, they had that big run back opening in the game up. They ran the ball back, you know, for the touchdown. Of course, called back on the penalty. Yes. Uh, right off the bat, and I thought of you. I said, uh-oh, Izzy's down in the hunt. Right off the bat with the penalty. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I can't stress this enough how vocal Harold Love is down yeah. there just because even when those breakout run plays happen for the Nighthawks, Harold Love was the first person. Kevin Guy didn't even say a word. Really? Harold Love is the one that's down there. It's our fault. I'm making adjustments. We have to figure out what we need to do to stop this run. All right. So a uh, third member of our broadcast team, Isaiah Jackson Jr., of course, we call him Izzy affectionately. Uh, unfortunately, Mike issues dead on the field. We're not getting it as much as we'd like to, but thanks for coming up at halftime. Thanks for having Giving me. us on the field. You'll be down there the rest of the game. Of course, post game, hopefully get you back up here and uh, have that. So when we come back, of course, it's halftime. Halftime's winding down. The teams are making their adjustments in the locker room. Then we'll get Dale and Doug back over here. Call the second half. Hopefully we get a Rattlers victory here at Desert Diamond, Diamond Arena. Don't forget, post game. WTSM TV post game show as well coming your way. So join us at WTSM TV for that. We'll see y'all then. Second half coming up next. You came looking for a light beer, and you found gold. 
Modelo Oro, the light beer with a smooth, elevated taste. Perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oro, the gold standard of light beer. Hello, I'm Parker Weinthal with the Rosen Team, brokered by eXp Realty. Are you a first-time home buyer? Guiding my clients through the home buying process is a passion of mine. And believe it or not, it's easier than you think. Give me a call or visit our website today. Spooner has been revolutionizing our community's experiences with physical therapy and hand therapy in the Valley since 1990. Make Spooner your first stop for your injury prevention, recovery, and treatment needs. Through specialized rehabilitation, personalized treatment plans, and functional performance trainings, our team is your team. Visit SpoonerPT.com to find one of our Valley-wide locations near you. Rattlers fans, thanks a ton for watching us right here on the home of the Rattlers, WTSMTV.com. Now, do you want more Rattlers coverage? You get it tomorrow morning. WTSMTV.com has four hours of local sports programming tomorrow morning with the main event from 8 to 10 and me, Doug Franz Unplugged, presented by Whirlwind Golf Club at Wild Horse Pass. Exclusive Rattlers info tomorrow morning at 6 on WTSMTV.com. How are you? Thanks for being a part of the Rattlers broadcast. My name's Doug Franz, this is Dale Hellestray, and we're enjoying ourselves. Hopefully you're enjoying us as well. I'm gonna try to stay focused because Isaiah Zizzy Jackson is behind the lights making faces right now. Yeah. Trying to go crazy and everything, but we're gonna be able to power through for the second half. Having a great time at Desert Diamond Arena. We already talked about some of your takeaways, first half and second half projections. Right. But really, one of the things that was a major problem at NAS, and it seems to be a problem tonight, quarterback keepers. Johnson's really been able to be uh, find space, mm -hmm. having a hard time to contain him. Yeah, he is because he's very athletic, and they got a pretty darn good offensive line from one half of football that we've got to see. Yep. Big, strong, physical. And again, I think the reason that you start him is because you want to run the football a little bit. You want to shorten the game a little bit. You want to give the Rattlers less possessions, which will keep the score down, which keeps you in the game. Okay. We'll see if the Rattlers then turn that in. But I think that's a big yes, as you see Connor Taylor right there, who's played a good game. But we'd like to see him. It's hard to ask a guy to step up who's already playing well. And the reason why we say that is because we need Connor Taylor to be able to make some stops. This was the first touchdown of the game when Isaiah Houston was able to squeeze one into the corner. And then field goal attempt was able to be held and keep it to three. This is the second touchdown when you were really complimentary to Lamar Mady. Yeah, Lamar Mady, a tremendous job. If you need yards, they're going to run left. And obviously, Miles is a big part of that. One of the issues, as you saw on that play, even though it ends in a touchdown, there's been a couple of bad snaps so far from the uh, Nighthawks. And if that continues, that could be an advantage. That play, it ended up in a touchdown, so not good for the Rattlers. But then there was a late fumble that led to three extra points for the Rattlers. Yes, it did. And obviously, to us, it looked like they, the quarterback was supposed to be under center or the center thought the quarterback was supposed to be there. You follow the ball, you give the Rattlers a chance. One of the things, as you see Yates and Majet right there and uh, Lowry, I ha this is one of the best pass rushing units in the IFL. And I think they've been kind of stonewalled a little bit today. Yes, Johnson's athletic, but we haven't seen him under duress other than one play, and he got a touchdown on that play. But a couple times they've dropped Love into coverage, which, again, I, I, I think it's you kind of tinker with things, but Love yeah. trying to cover guys. Uh, give, have him push the, the middle of the yeah. offensive line. And the other thing is they're not holding the ball very long. Uh -huh. You know, they're not, you're not taking a five-step drop, hanging on to the football, and allowing the pass rusher to get back there. Exactly. And I, I think if you're going to drop love into coverage, you're doing it because you're reading screen. Yeah. I haven't seen a screen yet. You know, have you? <laughs> well, that or a crossing route. Yeah. And yet still, I, I, I'd love to see love. You know, yeah, I'd like to see him push in the middle of, of that offensive line. Absolutely. 
So what the Rattlers want to do now is they want to be able to take control of this third quarter right off the bat. Now remember, the Rattlers received the football to begin the game. That's actually what Kevin Guy wants because now when you go out to the halftime, the captains will meet and the, uh, the referee will look over at the captain of the Nighthawks and say, what's your choice? A lot of people don't understand this. You actually get four choices. Choice number one is to kick off. Choice number two is to receive. Choice number three is decide uh, the rounded end zone. Choice number four is we'll defend the square end zone. Obviously, they're going to choose the ball. And then Kevin Guy gets exactly what he wants. He wants to cover and guard the rounded end zone in the third quarter, so therefore he could score into the square end zone later. That's going to be important. More square yards, if you're wondering, in the actual squared off end zone. And that man huh. can get open a little bit better with more space. Doug, you might be the only announcer I've ever heard talk about square footage of an end zone before. The area of a trapezoid. <laughs> it's very simple. It's one half, but you got to add the two bases. <laughs> then you got to multiply that times H. Oh, Once you do that, you're good. My goodness. But don't forget PEMDIS, because if you don't remember PEMDIS, you'll get the whole order. How, how does up. square? How does pi get in there? Three point one four. We don't, remember we don't right? need pi. We don't need pi. We the circle because the half circle it's a 28 degree rounded radius if you're or 28 feet is the radius that's the square end zone so that's the one that matters that's just length times width you so that's easy you sound a lot smarter than somebody who went to ohio university now, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what was that shot it says smu for those of you that don't know i applied to smu they sent me back a degree they said you've done enough you don't even have to go wow <laughs> That is the rounded end zone, much less square yardage. But Isaiah Houston was able to score in that right end zone right there where the uh, Nighthawks are. As you look around at some of the different players for the Well, Rattlers you see Lamar Mady there. To, it's always been interesting getting used to him being an all-IFL off edge line with the number 94. Yeah, Number yeah, 94 yeah. always has looked weird to me with him as an offensive guard. So that's the end of the actual halftime. The players are still milling around, but the referees have not called everybody together because we're at the zero mark of halftime and we're ready to go for second half action. Obviously, rule number one, be able to get a stop on the quarterback runs. But you might see, if you're Coach Davis, do you change anything right now, Dale? Are you saying, hey, they can't stop the run, let's go to it? Or are you looking at, all of halftime, I guarantee you, the Rattlers were trying to stop the quarterback run, and you come out throwing it a little bit. Well, I, I think if you're Vegas, you're sitting there looking at this thing and going, we're, it's a one-score game. Uh, where else would we want to be? It's a one-score game, and that's exactly where we want to be. Let's continue to do what we're doing. You don't drop the snap. Remember, that was on about the 12-yard yes. line going in, and all of a sudden, maybe you have a lead. Now, I'm wondering right now, on the big Jumbotron is this guy in a cowboy hat that screams. And I have always wondered, <laughs> where did they get this guy? I have never seen him on the Internet. I don't know who that is. If you know who it is, that's one thing. But this guy, he's hilarious to me. And it says, scream if you're a Rattlers fan. And he jumps up and just has the most horrible high-pitched scream, and hopefully it brings some good energy as we start the second half kickoff with the Nighthawks Chapman taking it up, and he gets hammered. Wow, is that the way to start the game? As Rasheed Hodge, the player that was high on the list of Steve McCollum, who spent a long time in the pregame talking about, brings the boom. I think we're ready for the second half, Dale. Yeah, you know what? Hello, it's Hodge. Always, always fun to watch how teams come out of that locker room. Kevin Guy, one of the best motivators. I, I'm not just saying the indoor football league, but in all football. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he gets his team ready to go no matter the circumstance. And, and right hey, now they're ready to go. If they weren't fired up, they are now. One boundary receiver on the near side trips right. For the Nighthawks. We'll throw to that boundary receiver. Quick catch. Not a great tackle on the part of Merriweather. And he isn't able to get Wimbush down. First down on the first play for the Nighthawks. Yeah, and you look at Wimbush there. Number six, five, nine, 200 pounds. So he's he's tough to get down on the ground. He's, he's shorter, but he's thick. Got to make sure you come up 
and get your arms wrapped around him. Very hard to tackle fire hydrants. <laughs> That's what he seems like. They had to stop for a second because the chain gang couldn't get out of the way in time. i got to tell you real quick, Doug, yeah. one of the most taxing jobs in an indoor football league game is being the down marker guy. You're sprinting back and forth yeah. the entire game. They struggled on that one. Quarterback keeper Johnson gets around Connor Taylor. I can't believe there's not a flag for a horse collar. Got a bit of a break right there, and it's only a three-yard gain, and it could have been a personal foul. Well, it's interesting because a horse collar, you've got to get your hands inside those shoulder pads. You're he's right. Just got, he's just got the jersey. It's actually, technically, it's called the nameplate, yeah. but you're still right. He did not get the nameplate. No. As I see it on replay, I'm wrong. The officials are right. There's a special Imagine caveat. That. Hold on. You just admit that publicly? I did. I did. <laughs> Very few people know there's a special <laughs> caveat. You can horse collar the quarterback, but only when he's in the pocket, not when he's a runner outside the pocket. To throw. Pump fake. Pressure's on, and he throws it away about seven yards away from a receiver. Will they get the intentional grounding? The side judge is walking up to the official to have a conversation yeah. with it, and they're going to say there was a receiver in the area. Connor Taylor doesn't get credit for the sack, but he gets a forced incompletion. If you notice there, that time it was Connor Taylor coming in. He was more under control, Amen. not just yep. trying to deliver a big hit, slow down a little bit. Hands up made it more difficult to throw the pass. There was a receiver about five yards away. I was wondering whether or not it's five yards close enough. What, what's the vicinity? <laughs> yeah. He was clearly throwing it away, but good call by the official. Let's keep playing football and keep the game going. Three seconds to snap it. They got to hurry, and they just do get the playoff. Johnson wants to go deep into the corner. It's up. It's caught. It's a touchdown. What a fantastic catch right up against the pressure from Dobbs and the Rattlers are now going to stare down an extra point that could tie the game if the Nighthawks convert. Again, kind of interesting here. Instead of throwing the ball to the outside, he throws it to the inside, making the catch that much more difficult for Caleb Hawley. But Hawley, six foot three, 200 pounds, a great big target for your quarterback to throw the football to. Wonderful little route. Well, the other thing I can say, Dobbs. catching the football in the indoor football league, not only do you have the defender that's going to hit you, yes. but you know that dasher board <laughs> somewhere around you, and that's going to hurt just as bad. They say five inches of padding is what's expected. <laughs> the extra point attempt is up, and it is good. We're tied. 11.23 to go, third quarter. This is Rattlers Football on WTSMTV.com. Hello all, Isaiah Jackson Jr. here from Iowa West. Tune in every Monday through Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. as we get into all your local and national teams in the NFL, MLB, and NBA. We also have some fun segments as well. We get into GM mode, factor foolishness, swipe right, and we also look at all the rumors taking place in the sports world today. All that and more every Monday through Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. here at WTSM TV. Honor is a steady rhythm, a beat that inspires remarkable medical professionals to work with passion and purpose. A tireless dedication to the lives we serve is what drives all of us at Honor Health. A shared focus on doing what we love. Honor Health. Honor above all. I'm Dr. Pamela Lund, Director of Sports and Orthopedic Imaging at Simon Med Imaging. I've been reading sports MRI studies for patients and athletes at all levels for over 20 years. When you're injured, an accurate diagnosis can mean the difference between chronic pain or pain-free enjoyment of your life and sports activities. At Simon Med, we treat you just like all of our elite athletes, with state-of-the-art equipment, precise interpretation, and compassion. The big screen right now has chug cam going on. Doug, would you would you stand up for the pressure? Would you just say, no, I'm not chugging? Or would you go ahead and try and win? My issue, oh, a little bit of an onside kick attempt or at least a squib to try to get lucky on the play. Man, you had me distracted with beer, which is far more important than the recovery by Rasheed Hodge. My rule would be, is somebody else getting me a beer? If I know another beer is coming, I'll chug for show. <laughs> But uh, I'm not going to uh, chug if I'm getting close to late last call. 
because now it's time to nurse. So it really depends. First quarter, absolutely. Getting close to the end of third when they cut off sales, no way. And does There's it analytics matter? of beer, too. You know that. And does it matter if one of your daughters is coming to get you or no? Well, that's a big stretch. There's no chugging if I'm on a one beer. <laughs> Once for every hour, hour and a half, you're okay if I'm driving. Back to football. Throw it far side. It's caught. It's a 10, 5, and then knocked out of bounds there. And guess what I see? I do not see the same quarterback. IFL champion Lorenzo Brown threw that pass to start the second half. That is a big deal. Number nine just got the play from Kevin Guy and went into the huddle. He's able to dump it off to Brooks on the far side, as you see on the replay. But that's an interesting decision that Coach Guy has decided with only two days of practice. Despite an entire training camp, he just got in this week. And Lorenzo Brown Jr. is now in at playing quarterback for the Arizona Rattlers. Good snap. He's looking, rolling, and he gets sandwiched and somehow did not take a sack or, excuse me, take a fumble on that Calhoun sack. Well, again, now a bunch of things come into play here. Communication. Uh, how many plays does he know? Uh, when you call a play, does he know the entire route tree? <laughs> Secondly, you're now down here in the red zone. You're inside the 10-yard line. Remember, those windows close up so quick. If you don't know where your receivers are going, that means you're going to hang on the ball a split second longer to make sure they're going where you think they're going. And there, therein lies the danger was, of getting up a sack. It was rude of me to laugh during your call there. But I saw the replay, and I was thinking, that man was retired last <laughs> week. Pitch play near side, caught by Miles, and he's able to get into the end zone. And the referee says, touchdown. Put those hands in the air, and we get the lead right back. And there's something that to be called the eye test. This team came out with a little more energy. Yep. Offensively, they looked a little smoother. They looked like they're playing faster. And hence, I think that Kevin Guy is happy he made the change. Interesting there on the replay, you could see the side judge was getting run over. <laughs> so he pointed all the way across the field to the linesman to ask, did the ball cross the plane before I got hit? Linesman on the far side said touchdown, and the scoreboard operator said, we'll give you six. The chance at the extra point is up, and it is able to just slip through the guy wire, and the Rattlers reclaim their lead. It's 32-23, and with 8.41 to go, we'll take a timeout too. He's Dale Hellestray. I'm Doug Franz. This is Rattlers Football on WTSMTV.com. For a light beer, and you found gold. Modelo ordered the light beer with a smooth, elevated taste, perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oro, the gold standard of light beer. Hi, it's Parker Weinthal again with EXP Realty. Not only do I help first time home buyers, but I also work with those looking for second homes, vacation homes, and even investment properties. Give me a call or visit our website today. They adjusted the scoreboard for some reason on the big scoreboard. 23 to 23 touchdown was giving the Rattlers a nine point lead. Now technically in this game, you might not realize it, a 10 point lead is actually a one possession game. As long as there's time on the clock, you can get the touchdown, then you can go for two and get eight, and then you can kick a deuce on the kickoff and you've got 10 points. But if there's no time left when you score your final touchdown, well, then there's no kickoff. 
and then you don't get the deuce attempt. Rattlers actually have a seven-point lead. Jeff Weir production was all over it. Our score said 30 to 23. Little bit of a pooch kick. It goes out of bounds. It missed by about three feet. Now, the referee, one referee is ruling a touchback, which it's not a touchback technically if it went over the wall in the air. That would be spotted at the 20. And the head referee went over and asked the line judge, wait a minute, you just signaled touchback. What happened? Did I miss something? And they communicated, and the side judge says, well, it went out of bounds over the end zone, and the referee said, that doesn't matter. We'll spot it at the 20, and that's a big benefit for the Nighthawks. <laughs> Are you a rules nerd in every sport? <laughs> You know, it's really bad <laughs> in board games. I know every board game. Oh, board you would be such game. a pain in the neck oh, to yeah. play with. And you're not breaking the rules, Dale. <laughs> and if you don't know the rules, I will break it. Little pitch play near side, and this is to Wimbush, and Wimbush just gets oh. smashed into the wall. Connor Taylor's all over the place today. He is, and he's so fun to watch play. He's got great instincts. And, boy, when he goes, it's like he's shot out of a can. He comes from midfield. And he's over the dasher board before you can blink an eye. So much fun to watch him play for a six foot. He's 225, 230 pounds. Moves like he's about 205. He's got to stay what's called behind the belt. So he's five yards away from the play. And he, there he is making another tackle as the quick out was to C.J. Windham, who found a little soft spot in that zone where and normally coach doesn't play a lot of zone, but Winfrey was backed off. Windham sat it down. Well, again, you, you, you're sitting here watching this offense get a little bit more comfortable as, as the game goes along. You know, Johnson ran the football a ton in that first half. But you see he's got a little bit of an arm, and we'll see if they open it up here a little bit as this mm -hmm. second half keeps going. Two men into motion. One man goes right by the quarterback. But Johnson uses the play fake and just waltzes right in to the end zone. Three guys bit the play fake. Everybody else just watched, and that got ugly quick. Well, when we see this replay again, I want you to watch my buddy, 77, just clear out a running path inside zone. They pull You've the been back talking about Mallory all game. Yeah, then they pull the backside guard, Corey Woodruff. He's a secondary blocker. Those are large human beings clearing out running space. After that play... Yates turned around and was really upset. It was almost like, hey, if I'm here doing my job setting the edge, who's going to come <laughs> over here and plug the middle? Nobody did. Touchdown, Nighthawks. The extra point attempt is up. He pushed it a little wide. It went wide right, and there's a big break. Rattlers keep the one-point lead, and we'll keep it right here to see what the Rattlers are able to do. If you're the Nighthawks, however, you got to be thrilled, Dale. This is, as you see, Coach Jernigan right now all over his defense. Yes. Because this is, after week one, the best defense in the league. Now, I'm kind of being a little dishonest because there was only one game last week. But that's two drives right down the middle, and it's the same problem from last week, quarterback on the keeper. Yes, uh, running the football. And uh, when we talk about there, it was one of the Rattlers since Kevin Guy took over a decade or more a decade more or so, the fact that he's always prided himself on physicality. Mm -hmm. Yes, see, they, they like to score in bunches, and it's really pretty to put up 70 points, but he's always prided himself on physicality. And right now on, on, in the trenches, uh, the, the, this Vegas team is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with yes, the Rattlers absolutely. right now. absolutely. And honestly, it's not something that we normally see. Plenty of teams have beaten the Rattlers over time frame. Plenty of teams have had good games. But you normally don't compete well in the trenches. One of the best pass rushing units, one of the best offensive lines is always the Rattlers. In tonight's game, the Nighthawks are keeping it right in their face. Last kick was a squib kick that really kind of shocked Rasheed Hodge. He's standing at the 15-yard line. Let's see what they do this time. A little early to mix in onside kicks. They'll kick it deep, kind of go for the deuce, miss it right. It goes out of bounds. That's the second time. So here's you go with a rule, Dale. 
Second time you kick it out, it's an extra five-yard penalty spotted at the 25-yard line. All right, so I'm going to call you out for the first time. Okay. Uh, in, in Ohio, is left, right, right's left? Because he, he missed it to the left. And uh, do you r- drive on the wrong side of the road in Ohio, or is that just Alabama? I don't know what I was doing. I yet. love I, – I, you know what? I don't know if I've ever heard Doug be quiet before. <laughs> I've never heard you be right before, so I was in shock. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was one of the top five dumbest things I've said. Right and left gets tough. We'll see if I get picked up on the throw, and I do by Gibbons, making the catch at the 10, spinning free to the one, first and goal, Rattlers. Wow, this is an amazing story. Lorenzo Brown comes in after two practices and is able to get a pass and find that open man in the middle, which twice Kettle missed in the first half. Is, is that not amazing, though? Here, here, obviously, he's a veteran talking about Brown. Uh, he, he's a tremendous thrower of the football. He's had success, but yet two days of practice. Yes. So what that tells you is that as a player, I'm looking at that going, do we really need to do training camp? <laughs> Do we really need to do all this practice stuff that you got here two days ago? What a compliment to head coach Kevin Guy. When the rest of the league thought he was retired, he went out and got himself a retired quarterback. And now he's changing the play at the line, but he didn't check the play clock. So, And Kevin Guy did check the play clock. Now this is a big deal to call a timeout when you know you're going to be playing a rat race game inside the one-minute warning. That right there is advantage Nighthawks because coming up in about 25 minutes of game time, eh, a little less than that, coming up in about 19 minutes of game time, those timeouts are going to be precious. Well, they are, but I think you also realize that at this juncture of the game, that you're driving the ball again. You don't want to have a negative play. Mm-hmm. And, again, when I talk about the communication, the, line, the running back lined up on the wrong side. Yep. And I think a receiver was misaligned. Yep. And, again, because – He's used to the one thing that football teams, it's always been curious to me. Everybody wants their own jargon. Yeah. And, and, and their zone right and their zone left. Why do you got to call it Lion or Tiger or Chicago or Memphis? It's zone right. You know, and then there's some people who n- number holes, two, four, I gotta six, eight. I got to laugh at you because for some reason every football guy says we're not going to call it right, <laughs> but we're going to call it with a word that starts with R. Yes. Well, then why did you just say right? You, hey, well, we're throwing the defense off Yeah. Exactly. and people from Ohio. <laughs> I am confused by right and left, obviously. Handoff, Miles, picks up a block from Brooks and doesn't oh. get it into the end zone. And a bad twisted ankle on the play. Two guys collided. Chapman is officially going to get credit with the tackle. But then he ran right into his own man at DJ Ford. Let's watch Ford. It's actually Ford that got the tackle. He took out Chapman. That's a great hit. Oh, it's a great hit. I think that Miles thought it was a shoe in. Uh, I don't know if you noticed the mesh point there, trying to hand the ball off. There's some contact between Brown and Miles. They haven't worked on many handoffs. Yep. You know, so hey, that's why you have training camp, yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, so now you can use that as a coach. You point. this is why we practice. Yeah. So the ball, they might have picked up a foot, maybe. And But it's only, we've had, it seems like a lot of action in this series. It's only second and goal. At the timeout was called on first and goal. This time, under center, puts his men into motion. Takes the snap, hands it off. Brooks powers through. Touchdown. Boy, there's your boy Lamar Mady walking right in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I I, I think, again, we talked about Martinez in the first half. Harold Love is now in at right guard. He's showing the defensive lineman emotions after throwing a really nice block. You see 99 right there. Good eye. Got to be versatile here uh, in the indoor football league. Love the starting nose guard. Those the backup offensive lineman. That's a huge point to keep an eye on because Martinez is very high on the list of Kevin guys. Had a good season. I'm guessing it is not performance related. No. Extra point attempt is up, and it's good. So it must be an injury related. We'll try to get more of that in the postgame press conference. Rattlers now have an eight-point lead, 326 to go, third quarter. He's Dale Hellestrang. I'm Doug Franz. You're watching WTSMTV.com.
Hey, Rattlers fans, it's Steve McCollum from the main event, and you might recognize this guy, Dale Hellestray. Dale, what do we do from 8 to 10 here Monday through Friday on WTSM-TV? We're going to kick everything off with the Arizona Rattlers home opener with the new arena and get you started there. Obviously, a lot of college basketball, too. Of course, Diamondbacks coming your way, Coyotes, Suns, and more. So join us Monday through Friday here on WTSM-TV. Burrito Express started with my father about 25 years ago. He got laid off and decided that he needed to do something to provide for his family. My brother and I were older teens, so literally we decided we're going to start out of his house. So we delivered uh, menus in a square mile area, literally started delivering burritos out of our home in Mesa, Arizona. And after about a month, he said, let's do this. Went and found his first location, and believe it or not, that's how it started. We started with one location back in 1995. Now we're where we are now. Coming up on Tuesday at noon on Hanging with Coop and Jeff, Coop's back, and we'll get you ready for the start of the baseball season as the Diamondbacks look to defend their NL title. Also, we're in the Sweet 16 of March Madness. All that coming up on Hanging with Coop and Jeff on WTSMTV.com, Tuesdays at noon. We're live, Desert Diamond Arena, the new home of the Arizona Rattlers. And this defense for the Rattlers has been fantastic for three halves. And now back-to-back -back touchdown drives for the Nighthawks. And they got a butt-chewing Dale from Coach Jernigan after the last drive. Let's see what happens now. Kind of a pooch kick, not very deep. Chapman takes it, goes up the middle, fights through a couple blockers, Connor Taylor grabs for dear life onto those knees and it's a 14 yard return and it'll be first and 10 for the offense of Jerome Johnson who has been a great running quarterback so far. The thing about you talk about this Rattlers defense you know what they react better to you know what somebody ran a really good route and beat you deep and it's a one play scoring drive yeah. then we're getting out physical and they're running the ball at us yeah, and, and, and that seems to bother them more because you can usually take care of the routes uh, with technique and things like that. But when it comes to physicality, you either got it or you don't. And the man that has it is big number 77 lined up at right guard. Johnson takes a little bit of a high snap. He's going to throw deep on a corner route. It's bumping in coverage. It's caught, and it is a touchdown. What a play by Randolph. The flag is going to be for defensive pass interference, so this play will stand as an amazing catch. Hey, Despite Rattlers fans, it's Steve McCollum high. from the main. Was that a one-handed catch, or did he get both of them down? You're talking about Quentin Randolph, 6'2", 190 pounds. You take a shot deep. Can't cover him any better than that. Yep. And then, you know, why don't you throw a little bit of pass interference? I was going to say, you can't cover him better. <laughs> interfere more than that. <laughs> if you're going to take the flag, knock the ball away. Looks like they might try to go for two here. Do you agree with going for two I, in the third quarter? I don't mind as the third quarter is winding down. I hate it when teams do it in the first half early third quarter because you're going to be chasing it the rest of the game. Receivers weren't set, but there's still 13 seconds left on the play clock. So they run a bunch of guys around and they get it fixed. Johnson's going to keep it, takes a drop, pump fakes. He sees a wide open lane, steps into it, and it gets immediately closed off by the safety Dylan Winfrey. Boy, was that a strong play. Dylan Winfrey... Read the play. Didn't it look like, Dale, there's a gap there? It looked like there's a big gap. Really nice job, though, plugging up the center. So we had to make a decision. And then Winfrey, I mean, we, we talk about these deep right back. Winfrey's listed 5'11", 185. And Devontae Merriweather's listed at 200 pounds. They both hit like freight trains. <laughs> yes, they do. And they, they, they will come up and hit you. Really nice open field tackle on a very athletic quarterback. I look at that play as you see everybody giving high fives to Dylan Winfrey, and then now they're giving it to Hodge trying to tell him, hey, let's shake off that pass interference. But the one of the things about the IFL that the casual fan might not realize, sure, they're probably the level of CFL players, but they're not 
quite the level of NFL players. It's a dramatically different game. But therefore, you assume as a fan that there's a different dichotomy in the locker room. And that's not true. Dylan Winfrey is one of the best leaders in sports. He's a guy that's willing to run into the darkness to make a play for his team. Mm -hmm. Well, and and that's the one thing. I don't care what sport you play. I really don't care what level you get to. The locker room is the one thing. I don't care if you become a multi-billionaire. You can't replace it. Yes. You cannot replace <laughs> what goes on in the locker room. Miles will take the bounce, 5'10", cuts it up in the middle of the field, takes a big shot. That was legal helmet-to-helmet <laughs> contact, wow. and he goes down at midfield. But that's why we don't want to see helmet-to-helmet <laughs> contact because Calhoun has been one of the best players on the field so far, and when he made that hit, he has not recovered very well from it. That was Jonathan Johnson number eight Oh, I see what happened. Good there. point. Johnson oh. made the hit, and then it stunted 25. So I saw Calhoun go down, and in truth, it was the big hit by Johnson that shoved Miles into him, and that's why he had trouble getting back up to his feet. Good call by you. Good hit by Johnson. But again, he uh, Miles was a runner, so it's a totally legal hit. Throw to the far side, caught by Gibbons. Tries to spin away, and he isn't able to get away on the play from Caesar. Close to a first down, caught second and three. Well, and those are the things that seem to be coming so easy right now to Brown throwing the football. I mean, that looked like nothing. That looked like a burp. Yes. It did. And, it, and they gained eight yards on it. But the ball came out. Yes. Didn't, didn't it? Yep. Boom, the ball came out. Eight yards, second down. Keep this drive moving. First name is Lorenzo. They already call him Zoe. Trips right. Brown sends his men into motion. Looks right at the trips formation. Has a man. Little bit of a back shoulder. Gibbons couldn't turn around and get it. Hampton was also there to break it up on a bang, bang play. It'll be third down. Well, really nice adjustment there on the play by number five, Bryce Hampton. Came off his coverage. Got a hand on the football at the last second. Yes, if that ball was thrown inside a little bit more, probably a completion and a touchdown. But again... Only two days of practice, Doug. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tight windows being used. A back in the eye this time with Shannon. But we'll throw a pitch, and it hits Miles in the face. He doesn't see it. It's loose. And now you've got a retired quarterback making a tackle to save a touchdown. The fumble was officially recovered by Garner, and it'll be first and ten with now each team having a fumble. Again, yeah, the pitch was a rocket. Yeah. When, you, when, when you're pitching that ball, you want a little touch on it, allow it to land softly in his hands. As you said, rocketed right off of his face mask, timing off a little bit, and now you got Vegas with great field position. I would have to imagine touch is one of the toughest things for a guy in two practices yes. to redevelop. 11 but, seconds on the clock. We'll see if they run a play. I don't they, think they realize it right now, but maybe they are. Yeah, they didn't notice that. The play clock was frozen because the play clock wasn't needed with the game clock about set to expire. Interesting when you're trailing, but you're only down by two and you still got an entire quarter of football to go. You can see the score on your screen. Rattlers only have a two-point lead. we got a fun fourth quarter coming up next. This is Rattlers Television on WTSMTV.com. You came looking for a light beer, and you found gold. Modelo Oro, the light beer with a smooth, elevated taste, perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oro, the gold standard of light beer. Hello, I'm Parker Weinthal with the Rosen Team, brokered by eXp Realty. Are you a first-time home buyer? Guiding my clients through the home buying process is a passion of mine, and believe it or not, it's easier than you think. Give me a call or visit our website today. Spooner has been revolutionizing our community's experiences with physical therapy and hand therapy in the Valley since 1990. Make Spooner your first stop for your injury prevention, recovery, and treatment need. Through specialized rehabilitation, personalized treatment plans, and functional performance trainings, our team is your team. Visit SpoonerPT.com to find one of our Valley-wide locations near you. 
Rattlers fans, thanks a ton for watching us right here on the home of the Rattlers, WTSMTV.com. Now, do you want more Rattlers coverage? You get it tomorrow morning. WTSMTV.com has four hours of local sports programming tomorrow morning with the main event from 8 to 10 and me, Doug Franz Unplugged, presented by Whirlwind Golf Club at Wild Horse Pass. Exclusive Rattlers info tomorrow morning at 6 on WTSMTV.com. Arizona Sidewinders on the field, trying to get the crowd going for the fourth quarter. Some bad memories in this arena from championship games gone wrong and trying to recreate and change everything for the regular season. The Rattlers need to do it now. And boy, would a defensive stand on a first and 10 from the Rattlers 15 yard line, Dale, wouldn't that be the ticket to get this thing started? I'm sorry, I could not hear you <laughs> and I did not know you were talking to me. Well, I I, I... I heard you talking about didn't they play a championship game here and have to change things? It's been some rough, it's been some rough championship yes. games, but then I said, now it could be a rough fourth quarter and wouldn't a stop be the exact way to get this thing started? Yeah. A stop to get it started. I like that. I like that. I, I, I threw a little, <laughs> little bit of the oxymoron on there. Well, I, th I think you're sitting there, if, if you're Kevin Guy and the Rattlers, you're going, they have our number right now. Yes, yes. And they're, they're moving the ball, and they're being able to throw the football a little bit more, which now adds a whole nother dynamic. So Johnson's got a two-by-two two formation. He's looking right. He wants to throw a timing route. It's broken up. No flag. Second down. Good play, Omari Alexander. That was great timing, too. I mean, again, I think if you're a Rattler fan, you're going great defense. If you're a Vegas fan, you're going, eh. Yep. Well, been. guess what? You saw the coaching <laughs> and the players pointing right there. They wanted a flag. It could have been pass interference. I would always lean towards let him yep. play football. One of the things that you noticed on a previous drive is a lot of 99 play in offense. Harold mm. Love, can he bring the heat as a nose guard when he's playing both ways this half? He's kind of more doing a read and react. Johnson spins away from Taylor, and now he's got a wide open lane. Cuts back against Love into the end zone. Touchdown, Nighthawks. Ouch. That man can fly. He can fly, and look, you come through Scott free again. You, you, you're, you're sitting there watching this thing unfold, and now that's two times where you come in, and you're going to come in and touch a lot in this game yep, yep. as that linebacker. But can you get the guy on the ground? Can you, can you make him uncomfortable? And right now, Rattler's not able to do that. It's a hard ask, but... Clearly, with the gap that was still left between him and Johnson, you would like to see him break down and be able to slide. But, like I said, that's easy to say with that with headphones on. Extra point attempt is up, and it is good. And the Nighthawks have exactly what they want, a lead. It's 42-37. We still got 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter. This is the home of the Rattlers. This is WTSMTV.com. Hey, Rattlers fans, it's Steve McCollum from the main event, and you might recognize this guy, Dale Hellestray. Dale, what do we do from 8 to 10 here Monday through Friday on WTSM-TV? We're going to kick everything off with the Arizona Rattlers home opener with the new arena and get you started there. Obviously, a lot of college basketball, too. Of course, Diamondbacks coming your way, Coyotes, Suns, and more. So join us Monday through Friday here on WTSM-TV. Burrito Express started with my father about 25 years ago. He got laid off and decided that he needed to do something to provide for his family. My brother and I were older teens, so literally we decided we're going to start out of his house. So we delivered uh, menus in a square mile area, literally started delivering burritos out of our home in Mesa, Arizona. And after about a month, he said, let's do this. Went and found his first location, and believe it or not, that's how it started. We started with one location back in 1995. Now we're where we are now. Coming up on Tuesday at noon on Hanging with Coop and Jeff, Coop's back, and we'll get you ready for the start of the baseball season as the Diamondbacks look to defend their NL title. 
Also, we're in the Sweet 16 of March Madness. All that coming up on Hanging with Coop and Jeff on WTSMTV.com, Tuesdays at noon. It's time for the fist pump cam. And Dale Hellestray did not bring any of the energy. We needed you, Dale. Where is your fist pumping? I'm too old to fish, fist pump. <laughs> there we go. Look at the pumping going on. Now, anybody want to see a Jamal Miles or Gibbons run back? Miles is standing at the 10. They're going to pooch it to him. It might go out of bounds. No, he's got to make a play at the 5 with his back to the defense, and he runs up to the 15-yard line and gets smothered right there and knocked out of bounds, and it'll be first and 10 Rattlers. That's a fantastic kick to keep that from going out of bounds but force Miles to turn his back. Really nice job and the kickoff coverage team. So now the Rattlers, you, you've got your third quarterback that you've played and hasn't had much practice time. Now you're behind Yeah. for the first time. How, how are you going to respond as a football team? Again, it seems like it might be on the lower end of scoring as we're you know, under 13 right, minutes right. left here in the fourth quarter. Can Brown get through this unscathed and not make any mistakes? Miles and Kobe are going to be the receivers in motion. Throw it underneath the coverage. It's caught there by Brooks. He's going to get probably about four yards. Call it second and six. Calhoun is the one that stepped up and made the tackle. How many times have I said his name today? And, and obviously when you have Brown in a quarterback, that takes away a lot of the, the running threat. He's not going to take off with the football very yep. often unless absolutely necessary. But you see that short passing game opening up a little bit and ball coming out in a hurry. 12 minutes to go. My question to you is, even though we're nowhere near time to hurry up, of course they need to hurry up here. They've only got six seconds to snap it. I'll finish the question in a second. Brown to throw. Got an open receiver in Houston on the far side. He tries to spin away from the tackle. Can't quite do it as stepping up was Hossman. But it's going to be very close to a first down, and it is. So first and ten. But when it's time to go hurry up, do most quarterbacks do better as new quarterbacks in the hurry up, or are they more handcuffed? Well, I think that it's probably better because you're flying by the seat of your pants a lot. Okay. And, again, a lot of it, yes, you go through two-minute drills, one-minute drills in practice, but most quarterbacks, especially experienced ones, fly by the seat of their pants just as well as they mm. do with planning. So advantage Rattlers. Hopefully we don't get there. Hopefully Arizona has a lead at that moment. They don't need it. Brown to throw. Overthrows Gibbons, and that'll be an incomplete pass, second and ten. You see the crowd going crazy there. For those of you that don't know in the IFL, you get to keep the ball. Go crazy. Almost like a foul ball. Well, it is yeah. like a foul ball in Major League Baseball. I really like that decision by Brown right there. It looked like an overthrow, but they, he had two defenders closing yeah. in on his wide receiver, and you throw that ball right into his hands, very good chance it gets intercepted. As they say, throw him open, and if he doesn't catch it, then nobody does. Houston Gibbons into motion on either side of the quarterback. Brown to throw. Good throw to Houston on the far side. He gets the catch at the five-yard line. It's first and goal, Arizona. Hampton on the tackle, and the receiver, the local boy from Arizona Christian, comes through. Just like a good shortstop. Watch this arm action. See the way the ball comes out of the hand. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's some zip on that thing. Watch this. I mean, it's not like he's rearing up and having to put a whole lot of effort in that. That ball just shoots out of his hand, accurately thrown for another first down. What a performance by the man that was retired last week. Two into motion on the far side. It's Gibbons at Houston. He's looking at both of them. He throws through the one hand and then caught for an interception as Gibbons couldn't control it. And then a great catch on the play that looked to be James Caesar. And he's able to, in celebration fashion, run it back the other way. Tough break for Brown. Tough catch for Gibbons. But you really want to see him pull that in. Well, you do, but, you know, that ball was thrown the same uh, 20 yard pass downfield. Watch the zip on yep. this thing. Got to try and take a little off of that. Bounces off his hands and 
another turnover with the Rattlers already down, 42 to 37. 9.46 to go. You heard Dale say it. The deficit is five. And with the Rattlers rotating a little bit right now because of a lot of Harold Love coming out, Theo Majet has come in as the nose guard, and he's a much faster player but doesn't have the girth of Harold Love. We'll see how that affects the pass rush. Trips left. Johnson takes the snap. He's going to keep it. Boy, it's wide open right up the middle. Slides down for a first down beyond the 15-yard line. First and 10 for the Nighthawks. Another one of those pre-diagnosed run game from your quarterback. Watch, he's going to kind of hide the ball, and then boom, he's gone. And you got those three big guys up front now working on some smaller guys for the Rattlers. They're going to be able to run the football. What timing, too. Connor Taylor came up to take the running back, and as soon as Connor Taylor turned his head, that was the exact moment Johnson busted it up the middle. 8.45 to go. Fake the handoff. Johnson keeps it, runs around near side. No flag on the play as Dobbs thought he was held. Another first down. Winfrey knocks him out of bounds. Well, this thing you see a lot of the Rattlers defenders looking at each other like, what am I supposed to do? The thing that can get frustrating is you have an assignment on every play. You got this gap, you got that gap. You got this receiver inside or outside. And it's when guys start trying to make plays that aren't their responsibility that holes like the last two plays open. Theo Majet checks out, says something to Coach Jernigan, and then walks down the tunnel in frustration. Harold Love comes back in in the nose after all these runs up the middle. Pitch play far side. Love got taken out, so there's a plenty of room on the cutback. Good job by Winfrey coming up to make the tackle, but it's after an eight-yard gain. Really nice open field tackle on the on the cutback there because, again, as you said, Love was taken out, but he took two offensive he linemen did. with him. I kind of thought it was an illegal cut block because it, it looked it like close. two were getting engaged. It, 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 was, it was close, probably could have been called, but that leaves somebody free yep. who has to come and make the tackle. Second down. You call it short four, maybe a long three. Trips left. Johnson puts his receivers into motion. Here comes Connor Taylor under control, almost an interception, and still an incredible catch as Winfrey can't get around Randolph, and that's going to be close to a first down depending on the spot. Third. Well, as this drive they did get it to him. the clock continues to run. You come, again, I like you come under control, but the quarterback's got your number. You come out of control, he's yep, going to run yep. the ball. You come under control, he's going to throw the football. He's doing a really nice job being patient here in the second half. Mike Davis has to be thrilled with his choice in quarterback. As he didn't want to say who was the starter, Mancuso's the veteran. He goes with Johnson, who's looked great. Play fake, big fake to get around Lowry, but then stepping up and making a big-time play was Merriweather before that could have been really ugly. Really nice job by Lowry there. You're not going to get credit for a tackle, but without him, this is going to turn into another big run, make some turn around, go back the other way, where all his buddies were. Merriweather came up, made a really nice open field tackle. I said Lowry. He is number 90. That was Yates that tried to run up and make the play and couldn't quite get there. But again, he forced the cutback for Merriweather to clean it up. Six minutes to go. Rattlers down by five. Second down, 11. Big Harold Love right on the center's face. High snap, good catch by Johnson, but here comes the pressure. And Johnson gains about a foot, third down. Nice job by Harold Love. Watch right in the middle here. Kind of held his ground. There wasn't a whole lot of room to run the football in those black jerseys are coming up and in bunches and make a tackle. He gets the push. Taylor and Yates finish it off. You saw the back judge come up there and talk to Yates. And the back judge, Keenan Kaiser, is probably saying, hey, make sure you stay in that alley. Don't get too wide of the guard. That's really good officiating to use your voice and not the flag. Taylor under control, tipped away by Winfrey, and it's fourth down. Winfrey's on fire right now. 
Really, really nice job there, getting your hand on the football, knocking it loose in one of those situations. You know, if you kick a field goal here, if you're Vegas, it's 45-37, still a one-score game. Yep. And it looks like that's what they're going to do as they bring the kicking team on. It's the backup quarterback. Mancuso is the holder. They were kind of late to come out. Still plenty of time on the play clock, but it is dwindling with 12 seconds to go. You can see the play clock on your screen right under where it says 4th and 11. False start, possibly. Love made contact. The catch is, did they see movement from, Ma from Woodruff first? Woodruff flinched just slightly. Well, the center looked like he double clutched. Well, look at the professional long snapper calling a snap infraction from 800 feet away. I think he did an unusual move because his guy, if you watch this, his, his guy's yep. move. He got his own guy to false start. Back it up five yards. Now spot the kick in the dead center of the field right from the snake hit. You talk about being in the snake pit right from the snake's head. He's going to kick it from the 25 at eight yards. It's a 33-yard attempt. Rattlers by five. Will it remain that, or do we have a kickoff with an eight-point deficit? Kick is up, and it's pushed to the near side. It is no good. And the Arizona defense is able to hold after the tough interception. When we come back, it's first and ten. Rattlers football right there, dead smack in the middle of the field. This is your Arizona Rattlers on WTSMTV.com. Hello all, Isaiah is Jackson Jr. here from IO West. Tune in every Monday through Friday from 1 to 2 p.m. as we get into all your local and national teams in the NFL, MLB, and NBA. We also have some fun segments as well. We get into GM mode, factor foolishness, swipe right, and we also look at all the rumors taking place in the sports world today. All that and more every Monday through Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. here at WTSM TV. Honor is a steady rhythm, a beat that inspires remarkable medical professionals to work with passion and purpose. A tireless dedication to the lives we serve is what drives all of us at Honor Health. A shared focus on doing what we love. Honor Health. Honor above all. I'm Dr. Pamela Lund, Director of Sports and Orthopedic Imaging at Simon Med Imaging. I've been reading sports MRI studies for patients and athletes at all levels for over 20 years. When you're injured, an accurate diagnosis can mean the difference between chronic pain or pain-free enjoyment of your life and sports activities. At Simon Med, we treat you just like all of our elite athletes, with state-of-the-art equipment, precise interpretation, and compassion. That's just part of the 9,000 people that are here tonight. And on your screen, it might not look like it because there's a ton of open spaces in the lower bowl, but a lot of the suites are full, and it's pretty full up top. So a good turnout, but we can do more. I think you'll love it. We've got a great game going on. We're having fun. Throw it over the middle, and it's caught there by Gibbons. He tries to spin away from a tackle, and then there's a whole flock of Nighthawks that run him over just past the 10-yard line. Full credit to Chapman for the original hit. And keep an eye now. We're under four minutes on the clock. Uh, watch how quick this clock gets down to one minute yeah. here in the fourth Ooh. quarter. Gibbons got a little twisted there. Yeah, he's holding that left knee just a yeah. little bit. Let's hope he's okay. Two-by-two two formation with both receivers in motion on the right. Oh, what a small window. Isaiah Houston with the catch. First down at midfield. Chapman with the tackle. Halsman chipped in. That's a, that's a tight little spot there to throw that ball, Dale. How is he able to fit that in? Chapman coming up, full head of steam. Want to shout out, little, going to give a little love. We got Harold Love at right guard battling his tail off in pass protection, doing a really nice job right now filling in for Martinez. Chain gang malfunction, so the side judge is going to put a stop to it for just a second to get everything settled, get the chain gang off the field. 
So far, the chain gang done a good job. They need to improve their 40 times a little bit. <laughs> so I don't think they're going to be invited to Indianapolis anytime soon. <laughs> Backup quarterback still in the game, throwing another completed pass. Ever since Lorenzo Brown came in, the ball is just screaming, and this time it's caught by Gibbon Caesar on the tackle. You can tell why he's been around so long. You can tell why he's been so good. Throws a really nice spiral. Doesn't put a whole lot of effort in throwing the football. And the ball is just coming out on a dime. You can see Kettle's a little young, so there's that half a second. Am I sure? Is that the guy I'm going to? Yes. And by the time you make that decision, sometimes they're covered. You're not seeing that with Zoe. The ball is out. Two by two. Looking. Fakes it over the middle. Throws it. Miles wasn't ready, but he was being held. Possibly a defensive holding. Could be a legal contact. Brown wants an extra flag for roughing the passer. Needs a little help getting up. Oh. Okay. Oh. That rule has been in place for a while, but it was a warning at first. Now they're calling that a penalty saying Jamal Miles ran too close to the umpire and using the umpire as a screen is illegal and an automatic personal foul. Now, Lamar Mady's fired up because he wants the personal foul to be called on the hit on the quarterback. That's not what was called. The down counts, so now the Rattlers, with only 2.08 to go, have a deep ball to try to get this first down. Look on your screen, Dale. You can't even see the chains right now. They're so far down the field. Two men in motion, two by two. Defense came out of its stance, free play. They've got a receiver in the end zone, and it's overthrown. I think Gibbons got a little skibbish, skittish, worried about where the wall is, but it'll be a five-yard gain. Chapman was in coverage. And you knew uh, the veteran quarterback. He knew the defense lineman. Was out of his stance, so he knew how to free play. Took a shot down the field just within inches. Of completing the pass. If you're just tuning into WTSMTV.com, you might not have heard Dale explain earlier what Harris did is unlike the outdoor game when the simple question is, don't be in the neutral zone. As long as you're not in the neutral zone, you're not offsides. Well, technically, it wasn't an offsides call. Illegal defense, as Dale explained, if you don't have a three-point stance, which basically means three body parts touching the ground, you are defending illegally, and that's what was called. It is not an automatic first down, however. It's just five yards. Smith into motion with Houston. Throw it. Oh, well over the head of Houston, and it'll be a, a difficult play. And now another late hit on the side, and it's not being called. As you can see, a little bit of a battle going on as Reed Brotherton, the referee, is trying to separate two linemen. And he doesn't think a flag needs to be thrown, and you can see the offensive line completely disagrees. Well, I think it was Malik Harris, the defensive lineman, 6'6", 260, working on our boy Harold Love. And uh, it went to the whistle and maybe a smidge over. Okay. We'll take the timeout, too. It's only a five-point deficit, but this has been a slow-moving drive for the Rattlers. Can they get the comeback win? We'll find out next. This is WTSMTV.com. You came looking for a light beer, and you found gold. Modelo Oro, the light beer with a smooth, elevated taste, perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oro, the gold standard of light beer. Hello, I'm Parker Weinthal with the Rosen Team, brokered by eXp Realty. Are you a first-time home buyer? Guiding my clients through the home buying process is a passion of mine, and believe it or not, it's easier than you think. Give me a call or visit our website today. Spooner has been revolutionizing our community's experiences with physical therapy and hand therapy in the Valley since 1990. Make Spooner your first stop for your injury prevention, recovery, and treatment needs. Through specialized rehabilitation, personalized treatment plans, and functional performance trainings, our team is your team. Visit SpoonerPT.com to find one of our valley-wide locations near you.
Rattlers fans, thanks a ton for watching us right here on the home of the Rattlers, WTSMTV.com. Now, do you want more Rattlers coverage? You get it tomorrow morning. WTSMTV.com has four hours of local sports programming tomorrow morning with the main event from 8 to 10 and me, Doug Franz Unplugged, presented by Whirlwind Golf Club at Wild Horse Pass. Exclusive Rattlers info tomorrow morning at 6 on WTSMTV.com. It's time to get going. Here you go. One minute to go. 42-37. Rattlers trail. Now, they kind of got the crowd fired up when we need them to be quiet. Okay, good. Good job, Rattlers fans. Stay quiet so we can hear the play call. Here comes Brown. Looking. Pressure is on. He throws. He's got a man. Flag for a late hit on the quarterback. He couldn't quite step into that throw, so Gibbons wasn't able to score the touchdown. But there's going to be roughing the passer. And it will be an automatic first down when it was third and long. Penalty is on Calhoun, but Dale, did you see a dropping of the head? Because the, the hit looked clean unless it was helmet to helmet. Well, what's always interesting is I do honestly believe no matter what league you're in, different quarterbacks get different calls. I think if you're... An older veteran guy oh, that's earned your stripes. You're more apt to get that call okay. than, say, if we were sitting out here and that was Kettle yep. stepping into that throw. Watching the replay, I couldn't quite see if it was true helmet to helmet. That's an automatic call if it's helmet to helmet because the quarterback is a protected player. Let's see what Brown can do here now with a fresh set of downs. Trips left. He's looking left. He's throwing right, and he's got a touchdown. What a catch by Gibbons. He's being spun down by Hossman, thrown into the wall, and gives the Rattlers the lead anyway. I'm kind of jacked up, Dale. What a <laughs> nice job by Brown. First of all, you go empty backfield. I'm wondering, are you going to run the football a couple times, try and drain this clock, try and... Make Vegas use their timeouts, do something. But you go empty backfield, throw the ball down the field. Now it looks like they're going to line up to go for two to make a field goal only worth a tie. And uh, tremendous execution for a guy who's been here for two days. Lorenzo Brown is still in there. So it looks like they're going to go for two to make a field goal only able to tie the score for the Nighthawks. A lot of motion. They're going to run a little Philly Philly. They're going to throw it. Miles keeps it, and he gets tackled. He had Isaiah Houston absolutely wide open in the back of the end zone as Philly Philly is the famous throw to Nick Folk and trying to get it back to the quarterback, but the quarterback was covered. And watch number seven. He is in the back of the end zone wide open, and Miles can't see him, and the two-point conversion is no good. Calhoun with the tackle and the one-point lead will remain on the board with 52.9 to go. And I notice that the quarterback, Brown, instead of head facing forward and maybe throwing his shoulder <laughs> into one of the defenders, <laughs> is turned sideways, pointing yeah, yep. to a receiver. Hey, give me some protection. Yeah. You've been here for two days. Your body ain't sore yet. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, though. I'm, I'm kind of of the opinion, hey, I just came off the couch. I don't need to be hitting anybody. Throw it to that guy. If you uh, are an NFL fan, you'll remember this year. I think it was the Bills who called former Cardinal Justin Pugh and said, we need you. So on Sunday night football, when they went through the announcements, Justin Pugh did not say where he went to college. He said, Justin Pugh, from off my couch. Yes. <laughs> this is one of the biggest stories in all the IFL. Trade your MVP quarterback, have a great half from your new quarterback, then lose him, win the game at Naz with your backup in Kettle, start your backup, and then decide, you know what, let's now in the second half bring in the quarterback that we called out of retirement. Two days of practice, and Brown has the Rattlers with a one-point lead. Biggest weakness of the day, kick cover let's see what happens and the Rattlers are there this time as Chapman cannot find a lane and he's down at the 15. 
Omari Alexander in on the tackle. 47.8 seconds left. Vegas has all three timeouts. Rattlers have two. Be interested to see the strategy. Yep. Again, on how you do this, is Vegas going to try and run the ball like they have? Try and suck some time off the clock? Make the Rattlers use their last two timeouts? I, I, the last minute of the half in games always fascinate me yep. in the indoor football league. Harold Love is still in, big 99, along with Taylor to try to stop these devastating quarterback runs. Four receivers on the left, but two come to the right. Johnson takes the snap a little bit high, looking. Here comes the pressure, and this time they got him. It's thrown, which is clearly going to be an intentional grounding penalty. Winfrey came up and grabbed the ball. We'll see what the call is, but it looks clear to be an intentional grounding because there was no receiver in the area. And let's see again. No receiver in your picture right there. And the referee, after talking with the side judge, drops the laundry. That's a loss of down. We got second and long, Dale. The way Connor Taylor is rushing now versus the way he was in the first half. Because what be the difference? Got both arms out wide, breaking down, making sure that he gets the quarterback in his arm. So Connor Taylor gets the play. What's really interesting is it looks like the Nighthawks called a timeout. With having to go so far, they didn't eat clock. If they're sitting at about the 25 or the Rattlers 20, man, they want that clock to roll. Yes. But with that much time being taken off and the fear of knowing we've got to get this second and long, they decide to use a timeout. And remember, all they need is a field goal. With this 40.5 seconds left, the rules completely change. We'll talk about those throughout the season. Last minute, yep. you touch the dashboard with the ball, clock stops. Incomplete pass, the clock will stop. The kicker has missed a couple, but not because of length, so distance isn't a problem. Johnson to throw, a little bit of a wheel route. He's got his man at midfield, caught there by Randolph, and that's going to be good enough for a first down, so so much for the talk of second and long. And the clock stops while they move the chains. Both Guy and the coaching staff from Vegas will eyeball each other. Somebody call a timeout here, or is the clock going to start again? Chains are set. They now wind the clock. 19 on the play clock, 29 on the game clock. Coach Guy does not call a timeout. Trips right, they throw it underneath. It's caught by Holly. He goes down shy of the sticks. Dobbs with the tackle. Clock runs 18 seconds. Coach Guy not calling timeout. Hurry up offense for the Nighthawks. Vegas cannot be playing for a field goal. Now they're suddenly running out as the offensive coordinator hurt his chin to call timeout. That was very strange. I, I'm sitting here watching this. As you pointed out, your kickers missed a couple kicks. Yeah. Your snap exchange had not been good. Uh, are you really playing for a field goal? If you have to kick it, I yeah. understand. But are you playing for it? This isn't, you know, a 95% kicker in the National Football League. The clock ran down to about eight and a half seconds. Then the referee just announced put 11 seconds on the clock. So we're officially at 11.0. And, you know, to your point, that was complete clock mismanagement by the coaching staff because if you want to run clock, call timeout, and kick a field goal, I guess. But if you don't, why didn't you call timeout much sooner in that play clock? You could have called it with 20, 21.2 yes. seconds left. You knew the clock was going to stop on the first down, but then restart when the chains were set. So that's Second first down game right jitters now. there. Second down right now. If you don't score, you maybe have two plays in you. Okay. See what they do. Trips left. There was motion on the line, no flag. Johnson wants to throw. He throws underneath, and it's dropped by Holly. Third down, 7.2 to go. Lowry stretched out and put on the pressure. How about Lowry dropping into coverage? You like your big guys out there right now? <laughs> no comment from Again, Dale. Well, you're trying to give the quarterback different looks if you're Arizona. But, I mean, if it's me right now, I'm bringing the heat. Yeah. And 
I know it, this clock is running down again. They have a call to play. Yes, they had to is, waste a timeout on a yep. dead clock. This is a Nighthawks meltdown. Five seconds on that play clock. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. They get it off, but their receivers were nowhere near the line of scrimmage. He's going to throw it near side. It's out of bounds, and there's only 3.5 remaining. Omari Alexander with the lockdown coverage. I still think, even if Vegas makes this field goal and wins the game, you look at the way this last drive was handled, and you've got out a lot of question marks. Yes. If you're this Vegas coaching staff and if you're if you're head coach Mike Day, but just the way you handle the time, three timeouts, all those things on this last drive, down one point. Rattlers have two timeouts, and he's staring down the referee. Watch Kevin Guy on the upper left of your screen. He's Kevin's waiting. Gonna call a timeout. He's waiting. He's coming in. And he is calling the timeout, and he just got it in front. There was a – but there was a flag. If Kevin Guy would not have called timeout, it would have been a delay of game. The back judge threw his flag for delay of game. So here's the question. Is it a five-yard penalty, or is it timeout Rattlers? Well, my biggest question is, did that go through – I don't think that went through the uprights. It I didn't. think he missed it yeah. to my right. Yeah. Maybe your left. <laughs> but I think he missed it. So no penalty for the delay of game. Rattlers will get their timeout and will try this again. And I tell you what, every kicker in the world, a lot of people think freezing the kicker works. It does if the kicker doesn't get the kickoff. But to your point, he was able to cleanly come up and get the kick. Yeah. Now he can kind of make an adjustment in his head. The other thing you got to take into account here is in the outdoor game, in the NFL, you got long snappers that only long snap. Here you got big number 77. You got Mallory snapping for the extra point. He's already had a couple shaky ones. Yep. It's going to be going through his head right now. Is the operation going to be clean? 99% chance this is the last play of the game. Rattlers by a point. If it's good, the Nighthawks are 1-0 on the season. If he misses, the Rattlers will be 2-0 and squarely in first place. Good snap. Good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. And that is the end of the game as time expired while the ball was in flight. And the Arizona Rattlers lose by two, 45-43. It is very, very rare that you can absolutely butcher the clock management wow. of a final drive and come away like it was planned all the time. And the Nighthawks, what a huge win for a last place team last year to come into the snake pit and get their first win of the season. You know what? They found a way. And at the end of the day, in this league, you play a lot of football games. You've got to find a way to win those games. This is not going to go down as an artistic, wonderful masterpiece. Right. But it still counts as one victory. And uh, the Rattlers, for all their success, seem to struggle a little bit early in the season. And this is a classic case. I know you're down to your second, third quarterback, but you had every chance to win this football game. Obviously, the number one thing that I think is going to be a focus for this Rattlers team, back-to-back -back games in which quarterback keepers have been extremely devastating. Now, let's not take away something from the quarterback, Johnson. He's going to be a handful for every team in this league. Yes. But at the same time, since we're focused on the Arizona Rattlers, that's a clear weakness that other teams are probably going to try to exploit. Well, again, you see all the problems that you have. Well, I think they fixed the kickoff return problem. Did a much better job covering kicks. And now the running game is going to start rearing its ugly head, whether it's handing the ball off like last week or the quarterback running the football like this week. Somehow, someway, you've got to get that run defense sh uh, shored up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. That was a huge flaw. And then some of the crazy plays in which you have uh, one of the best plays of the game is Johnson about to be sacked, and he's able to force feed a quick pass to be an outlet and be able to turn it around and get a touchdown. 
Then in the second half, just a little bit of a couple plays didn't go the Rattlers' way. Costly interception, not the fold of the quarterback, but it bounces off the hands of Gibbons and goes right to the defense. Different plays like that. And then Connor Taylor. Connor Taylor made some unbelievable plays attacking the quarterback, but I bet there were some other plays where he's got, hey, I got a lot to learn on when do I break down, when do I run through, because Johnson, on some of them, had his way. It is so hard when you're an aggressive player who loves to fly around the football field to say, no, no, you got to come under control. You might not be able to hit the guy. Come under control. Keep him in front of you. So we'll see how the Rattlers are going to respond. It's now time for Steve McCollum to take over for your postgame show. Let's try to figure out what just happened here. Rattlers a loser, 45-43, record drops to 1-1. One and one. This is Rattlers Football on WTSMTV.com. Burrito Express started with my father about 25 years ago. He got laid off and decided that he needed to do something to provide for his family. My brother and I were older teens, so literally we decided we're going to start out of his house. So we delivered uh, menus in a square mile area, literally started delivering burritos out of our home in Mesa, Arizona. And after about a month, he said, let's do this. Went and found his first location, and believe it or not, that's how it started. We started with one location back in 1995. Now we're where we are now. Coming up on Tuesday at noon on Hanging with Coop and Jeff, Coop's back, and we'll get you ready for the start of the baseball season as the Diamondbacks look to defend their NL title. Also, we're in the Sweet 16 of March Madness. All that coming up on Hanging with Coop and Jeff on WTSMTV.com, Tuesdays at noon. This is Whirlwind Golf Club at Wild Horse Pass. A severe test of will for those ready to meet the challenge. Where the oasis attacks the desert. Where ruggedness shares the same stage as beauty in spectacular glory. Yet fairness meets fun for players of all skill levels. This is Whirlwind Golf Club at Wild Horse Pass. Feel the excitement. Feel the energy. Feel the spirit of the wind. This is Whirlwind Golf Club at Wild Horse Pass. Spooner has been revolutionizing our community's experiences with physical therapy and hand therapy in the Valley since 1990. Make Spooner your first stop for your injury prevention, recovery, and treatment needs. Through specialized rehabilitation, personalized treatment plans, and functional performance trainings, our team is your team. Visit SpoonerPT.com to find one of our Valley-wide locations near you. I'm Dr. Pamela Lund, Director of Sports and Orthopedic Imaging at Simon Med Imaging. I've been reading sports MRI studies for patients and athletes at all levels for over 20 years. When you're injured, an accurate diagnosis can mean the difference between chronic pain or pain-free enjoyment of your life and sports activities. At Simon Med, we treat you just like all of our elite athletes, with state-of-the-art equipment, precise interpretation, and compassion. And we're back here, post-game wrap-up for the Rattlers versus Vegas. Of course, Rattlers going down to a last-second field goal there by Vegas. And I'm here with the play-by-play guys here, Doug and Dale. And uh, look, let's start with you, Doug, here. You know, as you said, uh, the management at the end of that game, quite frankly, quarterback switch, kind of put a little bit of cue in there. What were your thoughts on that? Well, if we go with the quarterback switch first. I love that the Rattlers made that move. I thought Kettle kind of held the ball just a beat too long, so I liked the way the ball was coming out. The end of the game, though, the Nighthawks have to be thrilled to death to be able to come away with a win when clearly they've got a lot of bugs to work out when it comes to being able to handle the clock management at the end. Yeah, I mean, it was it was just shocking that it came down to that ending there. Uh, really quick, uh, Dale, you know, Offensive line, defensive line. The defensive line was getting yelled at a lot. And, uh, Isaiah Jackson Jr. is going to come up here and talk about his conversation with Coach Guy here in a few. 
But uh, your thoughts on the defense and offensive line, especially late in that game? Well, I think it doesn't happen much with the Rattlers, but they physically got beat tonight. There mm -hmm. were some gargantuan holes to run through. I know the quarterback is very athletic and he it presents problems, but it was just the quarterback. Yeah. One like quarterback, running back, wide receiver, uh, all, all giving us a hard time. It was the quarterback. And so I think that's something that they will have to work on again this week. Offensive line I think for a while they, they, they held up. Martinez going out, that's a that's a yeah. problem. Could be a question mark um, because obviously the next guy up, it's not going to be Harold Love, but you only dress three <laughs> offensive linemen. It was Harold Love today, though. And, and, so. you're, and you're rolling the dice. <laughs> and, and I thought Harold Love handled himself pretty darn good going both Did you? Okay, I was going to ask that next because, yeah. uh, well, I was down there right next to the field when Love went in, and uh, he was very vocal. He was in both the offensive and defensive huddle. I mean, we got a true leader here for the Rattlers with number 99. If you've ever been around Harold Love, he's one of the top five funniest guys you've ever met. He really is, pardon the pun, full of love all the time, except when the helmet comes on. Then he's an animal, which is why that was such a big deal, the point that Dale made, because now you're losing the pressure that he provides as a nose guard because there's no way you can do a great job applying pressure up the middle while you're playing guard as yeah. well. So that's going to take a fatigue factor. And I thought, to Dale's point, the defensive line for the Rattlers always provides a ton of pressure. Yeah. Not tonight. Not yeah, tonight. Right. But what are you guys thoughts on the secondary really quick? I mean, uh, they were at times they were in there and sometimes they weren't. Dale? I, really, I, really I, I didn't have an issue, a big issue with the secondary, but the, the issue was stopping Johnson to me. Yeah. I, I do not think that they got beat because of their secondary. They got beat because they got out physical. And then I think Vegas will look back on this and go, we got lucky on that last round. Yeah, yeah. We got the highlight package or sometimes low light package here of the <laughs> Rattlers game tonight. What I'm seeing from the highlights, I'm looking at this play from Jamal Miles that he's able to get the cut back inside and Houston with the block. And then this touchdown was by Brooks. And what you saw there was that was the, the big hits that you were able to see from the offensive line. But then once the quarterback keepers were a problem, that was one of the few times they were able to stop it. Big intentional grounding, but what happened right after that, a big uh, first down after the intentional grounding, and the Rattlers weren't able to hold it together. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, as you see there in the highlight package, the defense got pressure on the Vegas quarterback. Uh, but at the same time, and joining us here, of course, Isaiah Jackson Jr., third member of the broadcasting team, sideline reporter. Izzy, end of the game there. You were down there. What was happening? Was it fun? I can, I, I can be honest <laughs> with you guys. Was it, was it fun at all? I mean, and it seemed like the Rattlers, they tried to match the physicality of the uh, Nighthawks as well, but they just got frustrated. They got frustrated. They tried to beat them outside of football, outside of the field, and they just uh, tempers flared, and they got out of the game. That is something, Adele, that you don't see with the Rattlers a lot, tempers flaring, losing control of the game, kind of like you saw today. Well, and I, I pointed out during the game, I've never been intimidated by a guy who pushes me after the whistle. <laughs> all right? That, that's never done anything to me, and all it can do is cost your team. I want you to be physical from snap to whistle or, like some people say, the echo of the whistle. Yeah. But pushing, shoving, doing all that nonsense – has never helped you in a football game. Uh, so, Izzy, I mean, tell us uh, right off the bat. I mean, Coach Guy afterwards, I saw him kind of hang out on the field a little bit, uh, you know, trying to get uh, – he was watching his players on the field specifically. Uh, anything to say as he came came off the field? Any of the other coaches? What was the thoughts? Well, offensive and de defensive linemen alike were just insanely frustrated. They felt like they deserved more holding calls, holding penalties. Kevin Guy actually walked over there, corrected them, just say, hey, this. even though I see you, what you guys are talking about, we have to come out here and play physical. We have to come out here and play our game. And, unfortunately, that just was the case. So, uh, Lorenzo Brown switched at halftime. Thoughts on the sideline really quick? Oh, really, really upset with Kettle. Really upset with Kettle after that first half. Uh, switching quarterbacks, and even then, uh, can't really say Kevin Guy was the happiest after that. <laughs> there, there you go, right? From the guys that were here calling the game for you, and, of course, you're watching the postgame show right here at WTSM-TV. Hello, I'm Parker Weinthal with the Rosen Team, broker by eXp Realty. Are you a first-time home buyer? Guiding my clients through the home buying process is a passion of mine, and believe it or not, it's easier than you think. Give me a call or visit our website today. can still find that fun. I take a chance, I do. 
Or you spend the whole day working that five game parlay. I'll take Philly plus two. Yes. When taking a chance becomes a victory dance, it's so fun to do. Or you go money line, it comes through, you feel fun. More than fun, it's true. Life would be dull if we never took a chance. Bet Rivers. Take a chance. You came looking for a light beer. And you found gold. Modelo Oro. The light beer with a smooth, elevated taste and a clean, crisp finish. Perfect for those who never settle for less than they deserve. Modelo Oro, the gold standard of light beer. Honor has a steady rhythm, a beat that inspires remarkable medical professionals to work with passion and purpose. A tireless dedication to the lives we serve is what drives all of us at Honor Health. A shared focus on doing what we love. Honor Health. Honor above all. Hey, Rattlers fans, it's Steve McCollum from the main event, and you might recognize this guy, Dale Hellestray. Dale, what do we do from 8 to 10 here Monday through Friday on WTSM-TV? We're going to kick everything off with the Arizona Rattlers home opener with the new arena and get you started there. Obviously, a lot of college basketball, too. Of course, Diamondbacks coming your way, Coyotes, Suns, and more. So join us Monday through Friday here on WTSM-TV. Rosati Sports Pub in Chandler. It's on Ray and McQueen. Sounds like a sports bar. What's the difference? You walk in and they actually have games on TV with the sound on. How many times do you walk into a supposed sports bar and they've got loud music on or somebody playing live or some kind of trivia game going on and you're there to watch the game? If you're like me, a simple guy, give me my pizza, give me my wings, give me my cold beer and make sure I can hear the Suns and D-backs, then you want Rosati Sports Pub in Chandler. All members of the Unplugged Army, welcome. Rosati Sports Pub, give me the game. Hi, it's Parker Weinthal again with eXp Realty. Not only do I help first-time home buyers, but I also work with those looking for second homes, vacation homes, and even investment properties. Give me a call or visit our website today. And we're back here to the post game, of course, here on WTSM TV at the Rattlers, where they go down tonight with a last second field goal there by Vegas. One and one on the season for the Rattlers after winning at Northern Arizona last week. Guys, this week coming up, they go to Bay Area defending champions. Now they don't have their quarterback from last year. He's here. He's injured, but he's here. At least, Doug, what do you see for next week going to Bay Area? Another season opening game for their opponent up there in uh, the Bay Area. Strangest stat in the world is exactly what uh, what you just gave. Three straight games in which the Rattlers are the season opener for the other team. Mm -hmm. Specifically to your quarterback, the way I, I just asked for a, a scouting report, and uh, I'm getting a little bit of one right now from Bay Area, so I'll give it to you in a second. But the thing I want to see is what is Brown able to do after a week of practice. Mm -hmm. I'm not as concerned about – them as I have about two things stopping any quarterback run from them and seeing Brown with a week of practice I mean Brown today his ball he releases the ball so fast out there a little bit inaccurate at times at least down where I was down at the field level is he what do you see yeah, a little inaccurate, just uncomfortable, just looking uncomfortable down there. So if they could just, and also having short-term memory, I feel like that was one of the biggest key points here. As soon as there was a mistake on the Rattlers' side, they dwelled on it for a long period of time. So short-term memory has to be the way, especially for these quarterbacks here. So uh, you were down there on the field. You saw the team. What are they going to work on this week getting ready for Bay Area in your mind? Oh, man, well, for just communication. Just communication outright because even when they would go uh, go back to the bench and they would have to have a talk with Kevin Guy, Harold Love and uh, Lamar and Matty, I mean, both of them, they had the most intense conversation holding hands on top yeah, of that. Really? You yeah. know, it was really, it was constructive, <laughs> but at the end of the day, they're yelling at each other, they're screaming. You want that intensity, so hopefully they can bring that over to the next game. Dale, they're going up to the defending champions up there. Obviously, a lot of changes up there, but you talked about physicality. In this game and losing that battle, how do you get that back in a week before you go on the road to another team that you have nothing about this year? Well, I tell you what, you, you, you look at the Rattlers, I have no doubt that they will talk and figure out the physicality part of it. That's the calling card of, of Kevin Guy. I'm going to be fascinated to see what happens at quarterback. Do you stay with Brown? Do you go back to Kettle? 
Uh, well, what? Because then you got to buy a week the following mm-hmm. week. So, uh, how are you going to handle the quarterback situation? Obviously, Brown in the second half, they looked much yes. crisper, more smooth, and all that. But they they didn't score enough. No, yeah. You know, they oh, yeah. finished drives and they had some turnovers. I, I would say rusty for Brown, yeah. uh, to be honest with you, coming in uh, to the second half. But you said you have a little bit of a scouting report. You reached out. I saw what it said. <laughs> what did it say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't see what it said oh. yet, so so good job by you. Um, what it says is, uh, here's a little bit of a fear, Bay Area is probably going to look at getting a good running quarterback. So that's, with back-to-back games, that's clearly yeah. the blueprint. And one of the interesting things, who knows if he was really into this, but the head coach of the Nighthawks told me last night, he wasn't going to name a starting quarterback until after the morning meaning this morning. Yeah. So everybody thought it was going to be Mancuso. I believe Kevin Guy even prepared for Mancuso, who's a little bit more of a standing quarterback, a little bit more of a statue quarterback. He's an athlete, yeah. but a little more of a standing quarterback and a drop-back guy. The interesting thing here is I wonder after the NAS game, that led to the decision mm-hmm. by Coach Mike to say, you know what? Let's go ahead and get the running Johnson a shot, and now I know Bay Area is going to do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, you saw, I don't know how it looked up here, gentlemen, but down on the field, I know Izzy saw this as well, holes opened up quickly that the quarterbacks were able to get into and run and pick up big yardage. Right. That's obviously going to be on the scouting report. And unfortunately, the Rattlers don't have a scouting report. So after Bay Area, then it'll be a bye week. We're back here, uh, uh, excuse me, April 14th on a Sunday 3 p.m. kickoff again right here at WTSM TV. So make sure you join us here from Desert Diamond Arena. Thank you for catching us here at WTSM TV. Join us all week long on all of our shows. We're going to have a blast recapping this and talking about it. We'll see you then.